You know what we hear to do? I keep saying it every week. We go out in the parking lot, sit on a tailgate, and chat a little bit about what's going on in the world of wood turning and what we can get to, to do better. You know, and we enjoy the heck out of it. I mean, yes. today we got another great demonstration. You can't get these demonstrations and pay for them at a club near you. You can't do it. Sure can. You can't find it. And look, I want to add one more thing to that thought. Not only you get the demonstration, maybe you miss it. Well, you know what else you can get? See this? This is what you can get. This is from our demonstrator. The natural edge offset bowl that was shown last week by Matt Harbor. He sent us the details. This is going to be in our in our website. This is a guy that gets paid to turn, sells his work, is a teacher, ranked professionally, if we had rankings. And he is giving us the information on how to turn this piece. Where? in the world else can you find that for free nowhere that's why we're here oh i love it i just love it and every week we get something new hey pick up if you haven't opened up your copy of we're turning magazine this month we're turning magazine i can tell you the issue number but i get it i bought we're turning magazine through amazon.com uh with amazon we're turning magazine Wood Turning Magazine. Make sure it's it's made in, in England. It's it's easy to understand. It's written in English, um, but it's it's uh, yeah. Look, look, he's laughing. He's he's laughing. Yeah, of all the people that have to laugh at us, uh, Martin Clarkson from the uh, or you know from the motherland is over there laughing at us. But Wood Turning Magazine is very well put together. My, my I, I could do personal opinions here. That, that's permitted. Um, I love the magazine. I read it front to back. It's in, on my iPad. I get stuck places and sometimes in clinics where I have to sit and just wait for stuff to happen. We all know about that. Um, I'll have the pad there, and I will read that magazine front to back and over and over again. And this month I picked it up, and there it was, the Duxbury Jig. Yeah, they took they, 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 your, your title, Dane. They took the title. Ducks Perry Jig is, is in there. Uh, but they have an article about Jim Duxbury's concentric offset jig that you can build. We have the directions for how to build it on our website. And we had it there before Wood Turning Magazine had it there. But they got a full article on how to do it, how to use it, how to set it up, where it came from, and everything else. In Wood Turning Magazine. But a page or two before, there's another article about a guy that used another one of Jim Duxbury's formulas and systems to do another turning project. So you see, all this sharing information stuff is bouncing around. If you haven't seen Wood Turning Magazine, I go to, go to Amazon.com, <clears throat> look up Wood Turning Magazine. Not, not American and all this stuff, just wood turning. And you'll see where you can subscribe to it. And you pay monthly. And you can always back out. You can always suspend your, your, your thing. I pay $3.27 a month. And I get, I get the entire magazine. And it's on my iPad. And I can go back a year or two years and three years. And it's all right here. I just scroll right through it, look at a piece. Now, the, the, the plus and minus of it, that's all I have is what's on my, eye, my iPad. I don't have the hard, I don't have a hard copy to lay out in front of me in a shop. But I'm sneaky. I know how to print pages off of that screen. So if I really need to see it and bring it out to the shop or bring it into the shop, I can do so. But I got it. I have it right there. So if I'm stuck waiting for a train or whatever, or a long car drive with mom, and uh, you know, flipping through things, it's right there. It's not online; it's on the pad. But I find some great stuff. They they do soup the nuts. 
You have heard that expression, soup the nuts? They're not out to teach you the art. They're not being kind about that. It's not about the art. It's about the fun, the excitement, the 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 the, the oddities. You know, you're gonna lay this out and do these beads and roll these coves and then take the skew and make these. It, it's they have wood turners known of throughout the entire world that contribute to this magazine. And every month there's little you know, tips and hints and ideas from professional turners from all over the all over the place. And I I enjoy the heck out of it. And today I got a note from Duxbury himself. He says, Hey, I know you I know you saw that my article was in there, but did you see that such such you know, Jim, I gotta let you know, man, I read that whole thing, the whole book, the whole whole issue. And I had a little bit of time sitting there today. So you know, I was going back over some other stuff. It's a good thing. Wood turning magazine. We don't we don't get a sponsorship from anybody for anything anytime, anywhere. <laughs> Passing on information is important. Oh, well, y'all ready, Scott? Yep. Right. Thank you. I'm uh, I'm putting together uh packages of of uh stickers. So these are packages I'm shipping out to folks who have ordered them. I mean, I got one, Pepper, Kirk Knapp, Jim Spallin, Ron, Vincent, Brenda, Billy Bur Hey. Oh, that's why I haven't gotten mine yet. You really? Really? Yeah. I got to look and see what happened to them. Like yours and Heather's went out. Last week or so, yeah. Well, I got to check again because it's somehow when we drop it at that one post office, if it's, I don't know. Okay. I'm, unha I'm ha unhappy with some four-letter companies right now. USPS being one of them. Oh, um, oh I'm so hurt. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to see it. I thought I saw her over there. <laughs> But yeah, I'll look they, into raised, it. they raised their prices again and again and again. Yeah, tell me right after you buy all those stamps. Uh, I got about uh, 25 envelopes here that I printed out in the last hour or so. That and these are folks that asked last week, please send me some. And then is I picked on other folks that I know they're in Texas. Um, and some guy said, Look, I belong to two or three or four clubs. Can I have some of those? club to give to those clubs we're doing what we can we're, we're getting these stickers to people so we can get them to spot and get them handed out and get them to people and uh spread the word bring up that image bring up that census a little bit bring it up there you know we're out there we're out to get that census bonus by the end of the year you know and, and thank goodness we have dane giving away those what do you call those packets dane the welcome packets for the new members. Welcome packets for new members. Yes. If With you haven't discounts. Your new member, if you haven't received your new member welcome kit, you've got to get in contact with them. Yeah. And I mean, you get the coupons and everything. And and the, um, I like the what one I had. you to do is say hi to us right now. Yeah. That's it. Hi, Brenda. There you go, Brenda. You got hi, one in there now. <laughs> Look, there's She's trouble. <laughs> there's ever been trouble from the, from the, from the east. There he is, Martin Clarkson's with us. He's he's uh, it's about midnight in uh, Great Britain, isn't it, Martin? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Getting close. I was in a little bit early tonight. Thought I'd come along and see how we were all doing. Yeah, we're we're good, Hi, Martin. Good to see you again, Martin. Hello, Scott. I only I totally spaced the meeting this morning. Yes, you we're, did. We're just as crazy as we always are. We gotta have a little fun. Who we talk about the right thing? Matt Harbor. Gonna do a pedestal natural edge bowl. Do good job. Recording in progress. 
Really? That's what that's what Matt's got online tonight? Yes. I just know that what we see here, you can't see anywhere else. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I love it. Um, somebody sent me a photograph of a an old, 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 old buddy of mine doing a demonstration last week at a at a club, a local club, or well, it's not real local anymore. And he said they had a full house. He sent me a photograph. It was 16 people. Huge meeting room, beautiful. 16 people in a full house. You know, um, but, but those 16 people got to watch one of the best, most enjoyable demonstrations because he's not that serious. He knows it's just wood turning and he knows how to have fun at it. I mean, I, I had a blast with this guy years and years ago. First time I had him demonstrate for when I was president of a club, I had him demonstrate for me. It was a blast. And I miss I miss those kind of actions, those interactions with members when you when rules kind of went off the table and you just had a good time with your friends and it kind of got a little loose. Nobody got hurt. Nobody nothing got injured. I don't think anybody got offended. Just all got together, turned wood, and had a good time. Um, and and he, he, I, I, I like to see that he did that demonstration a lot. Um, I want to see more of that. And he's not that good. Sean, you really aren't that good. But you, you, it's interesting. But you had technique. And I saw some clips of it from cell phones. You had some techniques that new turners, novice turners, can really learn from. And anytime you do something in front of somebody for a demonstration and you show them your technique, two things can happen. They can learn what to do and they can learn what not to do. And that's the purpose of this sharing thing is, you know, I see you make that pass across with that skew. And you've got that edge a little bit wide open. What I mean wide open is you're not riding a bevel. You're up a little coarse on the edge. You, know, you, you came up off the bevel. So you're, 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 I call it a wild, a wild cut. Um, you made that wild cut. Now, it went across, but was it really? Yeah. Um, so you learned, I don't, I don't want to make that kind of cut. I know how to do that better. If I step up back over here, Give me a flat spot going and then plane in. You know, if I'm going to attack it, I'm going to attack it like, you know, get, get through the clouds a little bit before I try to land. Um, but I'm, I miss that kind of interaction at clubs. We have that here. Sometimes you see our demonstrations say, man, why did they do that? Well, because there's half the people that are watching that know how to do it better and the other half don't know how to do it at all and we're trying to bridge that gap a little bit show you the tools and the technique and really it's a technique thing i love to watch them in demonstrations just to see how the demonstrator demonstrates i don't, don't really want to see the work he does i want to see how he gets there and it's really interesting when you see it um and you can pick them out of, out of the woods. I mean, I've watched big names, big names. You can't drop these names because people say, well, you only know, can. They have guys who have big names and they do videos and books and all this other stuff. They're terrible demonstrators. Maybe on the videos now, it's all prepared and stocked out and edited right. but when you do a demonstration it's just not clicking well i want to see the ones that click uh, cook is, is 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 one i mean you watch this guy he can walk up to a lathe with blocks of two by four in an hour's time turn out 10 or 12 projects lickety split right on through the whole lineup 
You won't believe how quick it is, how easy he makes it look, how effortless, how effortless it is, and how nice they come out. And he won't pick up a pad of sandpaper. He just does it all with good slicing and cutting. And it's it's I, I'm I'm just I've just been dumbfounded watching his demonstrations because I want to say wait 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 how did he do that how did he make that move and I used to like it when we with the club I was with I would make sure I had one camera on him that nobody could adjust just to watch Nick do his demonstrations just to watch because he flowed. And you can pick up a lot from that. I mean, just from, from roughing something in, and it's you know even just knocking the corners off something. How he he did it while he was looking at you, talking, knock the corners off a piece, bring it back down to 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 the right size. Um, the trick on getting the right size tenon to to have to, to grab it, all that he had it he had it worked out. And that's that's the ones I look for. The boss is leaving the camp. My and boss now lady. She's gone. <laughs> I'm safe for a little while. She's still putting up with me that I'm I'm still wounded seriously from all that um parafix they put on me. Uh, they took it off what ten days, two weeks ago or whatever. I, I still that's why I can't shave and get a haircut or anything right now. It's still not, still not clear. Tomorrow I might get cleared so I can do it. But oh, hey, I said parafix. I want to mention that uh, we heard this week that uh, Mark Soleil was ill, and we we checked on him. Did we check on him? Didn't we have? Yeah, uh, we had a. Yeah, I got a phone call from him, and uh, he said he had a mini stroke. About three or four weeks ago, he was in the ER for a couple of days or trying to find out what was wrong. And uh, then he spent one one day in a hospital room and then he's, maybe he went home and he's getting better every day. Huh. He, did, he talked like and, and looked like nothing had happened. My wife had that once and I think I had once. She do. I can't use that term around her. She won't let her me anybody say I had a stroke. Um, well, evidently he had. You know, he likes to go turning at three o'clock in the morning. That's why he's always tired at night. And uh, he had a student with him, and his student all of a sudden saw there was something wrong, and he went in and got his wife. And they got him to uh, the hospital in Atlanta right away. I think they called it a TSA. TIA. TIA. There you go. Thank you, Carl. A TIA. My wife had one, and the only way I could get her to go for treatment was to have um, one of the drivers for the ambulance tell her, you know, if if that gets any worse, you won't be able to use your hands to sew anymore. That's the only way I could get her to go to the hospital. She said, oh, no, this is this me. All right, this is me. I said, she could hardly talk. But, um, and it, it was six months before she told us that she had no sense of flavor, of taste. Uh, that's how much, that's what it hit. But she didn't want to tell anybody because we would maybe restrict her a little bit. Don't tell me about it. <laughs> you know, I got to explain to people how a fat guy doesn't have any sense of taste. So, I'm glad Mark's doing good. He's a he's a boy. He is a trip. He really is. Yeah, he is. He's the one that stopped from calling it wood turning to wood what? Wood slicing. Carl does believe that. that a gouge is an ugly word. Remember that little tiny finial he showed us? One of the students ch challenged him to do. Yeah. I asked him what he used to uh, to do that. He goes, "I didn't sand it." I said, "You couldn't have sanded it because there's not a sheet of sandpaper that small." But 
He used a 3 8 spindle gouge for that little tiny finial. <laughs> but you know, if you know how the tool cuts, that's all yeah. it's important. All it is. I've, I've had, uh, I have a, a young man that's working on my house in my yard for me. And um, I'm, I'm working with Tommy to, to help him be a better turner. We, what really wasn't a turner when, he, when we met about a year ago. He's getting pretty good. And he immediately came the other day and came up. He said, hey, look, you have all these tools out here. Uh, can I get one of your, uh, your big gouges, like your three-quarter inch gouge or whatever? So what do you want that for? He said, well, I think it's time to step up. Okay, so we, we sat out in, in the back for a little while and talked about it. I think at the end, I, I said, you know what? I'll give you any tool you want on that shelf over there. Any one you want, you can just take it. No deals, nothing else. But all you have to do is tell me how that tool is going to make a difference in your turning. Because you have... A three-eighths inch Ellsworth grind um, or elliptical grind gouge and a rig to do it. Why do you need more? Oh, I want to do big pieces. Well, he brought back a bowl last Thursday that was 14 inches out of a con that he turned with a three-eighths inch E elliptical grind bowl gouge, um, which is the the standard grind and uh, swept back grind, and he said, one halfway through, I'm thinking, "Boy, oh, I wish I had that big gouge." And I said, "Really?" And he says, "Yeah, just so I could say ah, I could do it without you." <laughs> <laughs> that sounds exactly like him. <laughs> yeah. I said, did it come out? He said, oh, it came out great. He said, and I wasn't tired. I wasn't beat up from it. Because all I could take was sweet little tender cuts. And every one of them, I knew I had to ground, ground, ground my tool and then work the bevel. And he said, and every time ribbons came off. And, and he said, you kept telling me. I'd be, I'd be totally in love when the little streamers doesn't see he oh, oh got a kick out of it. what do you what do you mean streamers? And he said this week he generated streamers and cutting and then he's been playing with and he watched somebody one of our demonstrators do something with uh, uh, shear scraping. He said and I flipped it over and did that shear scraping thing. He said, I was scared to death of it. Why? Well, he said, all I could think about is one of those edges catching. But it, it came out beautiful. I said, did a lot, a lot, didn't do a lot of sanding? He had the bowl in here, and he says, oh, yeah, I, I didn't get to sand this yet. <laughs> it looked pretty darn good. <laughs> I would showed him how to use a scraper the right way, how to use a scraper as the final cut. It's a novice turn. And I said, first thing you have to understand is sandpaper is not a cutting tool. You, 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 don't, you don't sand the shape. You don't sand it, get rid of marks. You just don't make the marks. And he, he's really doing good work. I'm proud of him. I wish I, wish I could spend a little more time at the lathe with him. And that's, that's coming. That's coming. I'm told I can get back to that soon. It's kind of kind of difficult to stand at a non-moving machine to try to teach somebody something, but it's coming back. But hey, I'm I'm proud as can be that Tommy's getting that done. And it always feels good when you teach somebody or, or see the, the the results of your teaching. I see Duxbury's in the house tonight. Mr. Duxbury's joining us. We were talking about you a little while ago, Jim. Uh oh. What they do? Oh, yeah. Nothing, nothing good. Don't worry about it. It was nothing good. Yeah. Uh, oh, we're, we're chatting about the um, we're turning magazine article. Oh, concerning the ducks, the the, the, 
the Duxbury jig and and other items that are in that magazine. It was really good. I love it. Uh, it's the first time I ever had somebody do an article about my article. And uh, usually when you do something wrong, you get a lot of a lot of replies or feedback, but not for doing anything right. And uh, this is the first time I've ever got something of that extent back. It's a good feeling. You wonder sometimes if anybody even looks at these things. And, uh, it was a good feeling. Um, do it for yeah. more than the money. You, uh, spend a lot of time. And we, somebody must have spent a half a day at least doing that reply. Um, I don't know what anybody else knows about it. I did a, an article on uh, slatted vases. I think it was in February. And uh, this guy just, no, it was, uh, what did he make? No, it was the uh, Dizzy Bowl, the Dizzy Bowl, an OG Dizzy Bowl. And uh, he decided he wanted to make one and he started looking at it. And uh, I'll be darned, he, he, he referred to the article many times. And after he got this thing done, he wrote an article about how good it was to be able to read this and have it help him. And uh, anyway, good feeling. Good, good. Uh, sure. Jim, you're right. a rock star. You're a yeah. rock star, Jim. Yeah. I don't know about sure. that. Oh, you're a rock yeah. star. You're definitely one of the Beatles. Well, <laughs> if we get if we see glitter, we're gone. All right. No, <laughs> we, yeah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a good feeling. Um, of course, to be able to help somebody and teach and uh, whatever. My dad taught me with, with a, a philosophy he said if it goes right or it goes wrong, you can tell the guy that did it. That's nice. Yeah. Talk to the guy who writes the checks. Yeah. <laughs> That's even nicer. Because I, I, I've seen him. He was, my dad was an awesome salesman. He was a door to door milkman. But he grew up in, in, in the Depression years. And he knew what it took to, to make a living and, and how to keep your customers. You could throw a pair of shoes away, and my dad could sell them back to you. <laughs> he really could. Because um, he could convince you, you can't live without this. And you'd believe him. And he wouldn't tell you any lies. He'd just convince you. But uh, I was with him in a car dealership one day. And I, I was, he wanted to buy a car. And the, the guys were over there talking. And he was standing in his wife beater T-shirt and his flip-flop shoes because he just finished a full 12-hour day at work. And he was burned out. They didn't want to pay any attention to this guy looking at this sporty Chevelle, you know, uh, sports car looking thing, you know, and I, I, I don't worry about that. He went over and asked to talk to the guy who signs the checks. And the lady said, why? She, she said, I just want to thank him for those guys over there because, I mean, they're enjoying the World Series. They're not letting anything get between them and that game, not even a customer. So I just want to thank them and, and appreciate it. And, and I'd be going about my way. And she, she caught what the gist of the thing was, and she, then he brought the guy out, and he says, you know, I can appreciate you, sir, and I know I can know that game is good. We got that car for like $10 above dealer cost. Yeah. Just said, I want to thank the boss. Um, we went back about two or three years later for me to buy a new car. They remembered him. <laughs> <laughs> We were there about five minutes when a guy came up and said, Hey, Mr. Castle, good to see you again, sir. How you doing? What are you interested in today? <laughs> <laughs> so they probably got your name, your picture up on the wall. Beware. Yeah. <laughs> um, but always talk to the boss. You know, to let him know what you think. I, I was telling one of my doctors this morning about that. And you know, she says, if you could fill out the survey, so, no, I do a little bit better in the survey. I always do. 
I want to let you, I want to let you know and let your boss know about my disappointment. I won't be able to spend any more quality time with you. You know, cause you're cutting off my visitation yeah. rights. <laughs> well, it's a different it, feeling when somebody goes out of goes out on a limb and uh, takes the time to write something good. You know, they, you, most definitely. You, you you need the criticism too. There's no problem with that. I I don't have any problem with criticism. I, you don't learn anything from people shaking their heads and telling you you did a great job when you didn't. But All right, you know, you, you, anyway. you do good, you do bad, and then sometimes things just go ugly. But then, you know, yeah. we just bought a new car, and I wrote the guy that owns the dealership. And I, that's the third or fourth car I bought from the dealership. I wrote, wrote the guy that owns the dealership and said, you know, there's one thing I'm extremely thankful for. You still have Vincent working for you because I've never had treatment like this anywhere in the world. He went, uh, we, we walked in cold one day and said, we're looking to, to, to buy a new car to do this. He, re, he sold us the, the previous car and he went above and beyond all the way through, all the way through, all the way through. And we had a hiccup at the end on my DAV license. Um, now it wasn't his fault it was somebody else's fault way up the line but this guy was involved every single way to try to fix that all the way through but i wrote his boss a, a letter and he tells me they not only read it to the company they read it to the district sales meeting to tell them about you know uh, and i put it in the beginning my daddy said if you do right or wrong tell the boss <laughs> it, it makes tell you folks it you have to do it if they're right or they're wrong if it makes a difference especially if it may, if if they've done something special for you because yeah. um, yeah. remember they're not, they work for a check they're not going to get a bonus because they yeah. help you get through this i mean the people i see at the hospital they don't get a bonus because you know, um, I've never waited more than five minutes for an appointment or I get first come first serve basis or anything like that. I mean, those those folks don't get a bonus and they don't get to go, go to break early if they get this done and all. You know, it's it's a fluid program. So mm. me telling them, thank you, I appreciate it. And then letting the people they work with and for know. I appreciate you. Yeah. Um, when I was leaving treatment the other day, there was a very nice, rather older guy, uh, older than me. Um, he was a, a preacher. Uh, well, he had the mannerisms of a, of a, of a, uh, a Baptist type preacher. He came out from his meeting. He stopped in the waiting room. And he says, folks, this is a wonderful place. I had a terrific experience i hope all of y'all go in and get wonderful news today and feel great when you leave and let you know and i'm thinking mm. isn't that a nice thing to come out and say That's they could have told me he's going to die on tuesday you know he, he didn't come out with that oh woe is me oh you know he came out happy and he shared yeah. his happiness it was so oh, it was so nice well, well, I said, wish we get his, yeah, she said, wish we get his, you're getting the elevator with him. Mm -hmm. I said, I'll tell you what car he'll be in, he'll tell you when you get down, says where he goes, because everybody, every direction he went, people will be smiling. Because yep. you can, no matter what it is, hey, Doug, you can make it happy. You, Eddie, you look, look and sound like you feel better this week. I am. I Mark, am. Um, Mark Slay came on. Mark's in here. Okay, mm -hmm. y'all be careful. Be careful. Be careful what you say. Don't tell them anything about what we said earlier. Okay? <laughs> That's the key. We're not supposed to get them upset or excited, nervous, or pissed off. I think that was the limits. Okay. <laughs> Mark Slay is one of all the older. Did I say older members? 
Elder Sammers. <laughs> go, go easy, I'm listening. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, how's Scott making out? Scott on the West Coast. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay. You guys hear me all right? Yeah, yeah we can hear Okay. I like that bling. I like that bling. You can turn what is that bling on? No. <laughs> and can you imagine the shavings getting down inside here and there? And it, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, be, I'm itching already. Yeah. Yep. No, surgery went well. I saw my doctor today. He said I'm 99% uh, there. Give it a couple more weeks and I'll be back to normal stuff. So. All right, that's great news. Yeah, don't I'm, rush. I'm, don't rush taking that brace off. No matter how, no matter why, don't rush that. Oh yeah, I, I've had this thing on since I left the hospital. <laughs> yep. Oh, how I remember. Yeah, the, uh, it's very important to keep this thing on and keep it the right settings. There's settings on it for different size people and everything. And right. I gotta sleep in it. You said from now on though, I can take it off to eat. And then next week I can take it off to eat and sleep. Thank God for that. <laughs> okay. Probably so, sleep better, won't you? Yeah, he, he took x-rays today and he said it looks really, really good. Yeah, he sees no problems. And I'm pain-free. I mean, I don't just a little bit of leftover pain from the surgery, but that's it. Well, well, that's, that's, great. Great. that's great to hear. Uh, yeah. So I'll be up to my old antiques here pretty soon, and I'll be definitely be ready to go for SWAT. So, right. Yeah. Definitely be going on the mark then. Because if you folks are that are going to SWAT, which happens four weeks from today, I believe, or four weeks from tomorrow, it's, it's going to be in Waco, Texas. Personal opinion, where else find a symposium? Um, Scott's going to be demonstrating, and he's going to be holding a special meeting for Worldwide Wood Turners right there in his demonstration. Right, right. You know, so so if you want join in to a special meeting of us, go ahead and be there. And we're going to have probably twenty five or thirty members. What I'm doing right now, I'm packing Worldwide Wood Turners stickers. What I'm busy at today, and I'm mailing them to probably 20 or 25 members that have said, Hey, Eddie, I'm going to SWAT, I'm interested in passing them out, and that's what these are going for. I had somebody said they would pick up the shipping and handling. I like that term, shipping and handling, but it means they're going to pay the postage um, for me to send them out. And then they get distributed because I can't go. I'm told that um, I can't fly. Ah, yada, 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 yada. So I got, I'm getting some folks to cover my bases for me. And I'm entrusting folks like Billy Burt to take up some slack. And, and Tim Hatch is going to be able to send him some. Tim Hatch, I'm sending some to Tim. Well, I'm sending the Julie. You see, I didn't get Tim's address. I got Julie's address. So I mean, kind of Julie's kind of you know sliding along now. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna get it covered. We're gonna be up there. So if you see one of our members, ask him. Uh, if you don't have a sticker, you can get them. They're ten stickers for five dollars. They go in the envelope just like this. All the details are on the front page of our website. And I already, friends, I just told the boss, she's going to check and see if we can't get anything back on those two. We're just going to pop out two more envelopes tonight and get them in the mail tomorrow to y'all. But we'll mail them out probably in a day or so after we get the request. But it's five bucks. If you pay me by a check, pay me. We don't have a bank account. We don't have any money. We don't have a structure. Um, and, and that's an important thing in our setup, our makeup. 
Um, and that will come up in a little bit later on this evening. But um, this is meeting number 199. We've been getting together like this for almost four years. And the thing is this, folks, we're a bunch of wood turners, men, women, children, whatever it is. We're out on a parking lot, sitting on a tailgate, telling stories about wood turning, sharing lies, tips, tricks, ideas, drawings, articles, do's, don'ts, nevers, and all that. That's all we are. I, I Somebody approached me last week and said, we need to prohibit this or ban that or, or restrict this, or restrict that. Really? Really? You, you got to ask my family before you think you want to ask me to ban something. Yeah. You know. um, we're going to discuss that later in the safety talk. Yeah, we have to. We really do. And it's going to be brief. Very brief. Yes. We don't. I hope. Oh, it yeah, will be. It will it's, be. It's, it's going to be brief, Bob. You can only beat a dead horse for so long, and then it's still dead. All right. Again, I ended up carrying 10 more stickers than I needed for tonight. So if you're interested in stickers, I have 10 ready to go right now. Operators are standing by. Don't you like to hear that? Operators yeah. are standing by. Uh, <laughs> one of my granddaughters. My one of my grand my matter of fact uh, granddaughter. She's a dental hygienist now. She 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 heard that on TV one time. She says, "What are they standing by for?" <laughs> Uh, operators standing by means they're standing by for your phone call to tape so they can to send, spend money. <laughs> That's what they mean. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But, uh, you heard, she was so matter of fact. I mean, she, she said, big guy, what are you standing by for? You know, this is, this, she is straight and narrow. I mean, it, it, I, I love, she's, she's a darling girl. She really is. And she's doing great with whatever profession um, with uh, the hygienist thing. But I put a walkway in front of the house and from the sidewalk to the house, our old walkway, the house is 100 years old. The walkway had settled a little bit, a lawn came up or whatever, um, and it was a little bit of water on it. So I had these red clay bricks that came from a job I was building. And, I brought all the extras home and I, I laid them out there in a, in a diamond pattern along, along the walkway. Well, that looked nice, but when you ride over the tractor, the corners would come up and the blades would hit them. So I, I found something at Home Depot for a, an edge and I picked them up and started relaying them straight in a regular pattern. And I got about 40 feet of it done. And she comes over and I got the first 40 feet done in, with the new pattern and the second 25 or 30 feet is still in the, the diamond. And she, she stops, she says, um, when are you going to fix this? I said, what? She said, Did you, 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 and she, she could hardly talk to me. She said, you, you can't leave this like this. I said, what do you mean leave this like, she says this and that they have to match. You can't leave this like this. If you're going to leave it, I'm going to, I'm going to use the other door, you know, because her mind could not take that change. And that's what makes her really good at what she does. <laughs> Cindy laughs. She says, that's what she meant by what do they need? They're standing by, you know, okay. are they really, are they really, are they really standing by? I said, trust me, honey. I, I've done. Speaking of, um, speaking of standing by, we got a couple, we got a couple gallery items standing by, Eddie. Who we got? Who we got? Who's out there? Who's out there? Well, would you believe we got no Band-Aid Brenda up? Hey, Brenda. Hi, guys. 
Hi. Hi. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, Dane. We definitely oh, missed like you. That. You like this? Oh, it looks great. Oh, that you is know, neat. You know, I had trouble uh, with uh, Dane, you know, and I was uh, I was um, advised to back up, go back to spindle turning. Yeah. Well, when I seen the uh, lighthouse that Mrs. Duxbury did, I thought, I think I could do that. Okay. Well, oh, I did. Man. Yeah. Not all the bark stayed on it. Looks fabulous. Okay. Looks you did a great job, yeah, Brenda. Great job. Well, I what, did until I started doing? Um, doing the top part here. And then the uh, ship okay. came out. <laughs> yeah. You're the only one that knows it. <laughs> so it's it's going to sit on my mantle like like this. There you go. Uh -huh. you do. Yeah. <laughs> And this one, Real I did quick. use Parfex on it, and it is nice and smooth. Oh, that's great. It looks so, I just did this, what, like three or four days ago? It was yep. hot and crap outside. <laughs> what kind of wood was it? I think it's a piece of black walnut. Oh, okay. I think. I think it's really well. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, I think it's black walnut. So, so did you do the carving up, up up at the top around where the light is at? N no, it was all done on the on the lathe. So, so, well, okay, okay. I thought there was a little. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I shit. I you know turned this part, drilled the uh, holes there with the Forstner bits. No, no, yes, I I, I was looking at something different. Was, that's beautiful. Yeah. I think the problem was, I think there was all these cracks in it, and I'd hit one yeah. of them cracks. Yeah. And chipped it out. So, yeah. I got another one on the lathe now. We'll try again. Got a girl. Thanks, Very John. Good. I'll tell yeah. Rita. She'll get a kick out of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all I got. All right. Let's go to Dale. Hey, Dale. Yeah. Man, River, you you muted Dale. Dale, we can't hear you. There you go. There we go. I, I forgot to unmute my stuff. <laughs> walnut bowl I did recently. Very nice. It is nice. It's uh, very nice. To work on the inside. Here's a, I believe it's cherry. My brother gave it to me. He thought it was cherry, but he wasn't sure, and I'm not 100% sure. Nice. Looks good. Well, if you want to call it cherry, we'll go along with you. And this was Box Elder. Mm. There you go. And the wood were all locally sourced here in the Horseheads, New York. Box Elder came from a neighbor. And they're all turned on a Penn State Industries 10 inch lathe that I've had for about 14 years. Outstanding. Great job. <laughs> Can't, I have to have a better lathe, but not in the budget. Impressive. It looks like it's serving the purpose. No worries there. Yep, and I have never had any formal training because the nearest club to me is two hours away. No, it's not. And it's into the arm. Well, reach out. There, there we are. Yeah, we're all right here. Uh, and, you're, and you're here. <laughs> yeah, uh, everything I've learned is either books, magazines, and most, and YouTube. Yeah. There you go. Because yeah. the, the nearest club to me is in Rochester, New York, which is a two hour drive, and most of their meetings are in the winter time, and you don't drive between here and Rochester in the winter. <laughs> Understand that. Damn, I hear that. <laughs> because Rochester, Rochester's in the snow belt. <laughs> Boy, is it ever. That is Buffalo. Yep. 
Yeah, it's about an hour and a half east of Buffalo, and I'm three hours east of Buffalo. And that would make a haul. Definitely. Well, now you got yeah. a new meeting that meets every Wednesday. Yep. Yeah, I, I try to I sometimes I watch the demonstrations, but there's also another live that I can watch too, so I have to make a choice between the two. Oh no. No worries. We're glad to see you here. And, and you remember can, all of our stuff is on all of our stuff is on our website. Every one of our demonstrations is on our website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I'm when I have the time. Because when the wife's not at work, I me occupied. No, I understand. COVID forced, COVID forced me into retirement a couple of years ago before I was really ready, but we all know how that goes. Yeah, we sure do. Either and way, Eddie, you're you're here. Eddie, you were the first one I actually saw on YouTube. And all three of those bowls were uh, finished with the shine juice that I learned from you. Oh, wow. Yeah. There you go. That's from my mentor, O.B. Lacoste. Yeah. The finest gentleman uh, I've ever I met. It was nice meeting you, Dale. All right, thank you, Dale. All right, let's go to Roger. Hey, Roger. There he is. Hello, all. Hi there. Hey, I'm working on another urn. Is that the wife's urn? It's got one coat of sanding sealer on it right now. It needs to be resanded again, and then I'll finish it out. Pretty, very pretty. Gorgeous. I like the accent ring. That's really nice. Yeah, I do too. Yes. Nice job. My wife liked the accent ring, but she doesn't like the vase or the urn. So she wants a different one. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So what do we do? Make another one. Make her a different one. <laughs> <we> All right. <laughs> Looks good to me. Yeah. What does she didn't like about it? She wanted something a little different. Huh? Huh? She wanted something a different shape. She wanted a different shape. She wanted it. She wants it short and fat. <laughs> short. Oh, like, sort of like me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I resemble that. <laughs> <laughs> so I started drawing some pictures and see what I can come up with. Well, remember, I'm not make another the, ring. But hey, Roger, remember we got the uh, urn calculator on the. On the yeah, web page. But it won't let me draw out the way that she wants it on the calculator. Uh, okay. Got it. Well, good luck with that. I'm sure you'll be showing us. Oh, I will eventually. She wants it out of mahogany. No. Oh. All right. Which I've got I'm sure out. You'll mahogany. figure it out. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you now. All right, let's go to Mr. Loosh. Hey, Bill. Good evening, gentlemen, ladies. How is everyone this evening? Hi, Bill. Good. Um, I have a couple of pieces. Uh, I've, I've shown um, uh, Kentucky Coffee Tree before, but this is the latest one. Uh, a little seven-inch high, four-inch diameter vase. Um, pretty nice. Uh, pretty nice. Yeah, I, I love the grain pattern in this wood. Lovely to work with. Uh, I, I like that little branch inclusion. That's nice. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's uh, it's it cuts like butter, and it's uh, you know it's really really nice wood. Number one, this is uh, I've also shown some of this wood before. This is uh, Nootka cypress from the the rainforest on the west coast. Uh, I'm, I'm making a series of candles for a daughter-in-law and her siblings. And so uh, this was the first one. Um, they're not all going to get uh, the Nootka Cypress wood. Little uh, ring on the top is from Lee Valley. Um, yeah, beautiful. It's it's pretty wood. It's uh, very oily. It takes a long time to dry, but it's uh, really very nice wood. 
And uh, I mentioned before that my wife works at a local um, um, uh, flea, um, uh, frippery, we call it here, a thrift shop. And they get uh, cutting boards off and they're all carved up and they can't sell them. So I get those. So I sand up uh, a side, so I get two good sides and glue them together. And uh, this is the this is the latest um, recycled maple on the top. I think the bottom is uh, probably um, um, bamboo. And That's almost cheating. <laughs> yes, it is cheating. Uh, but you know, uh, That's this is smart. <laughs> this, this is the price I like to pay for wood. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> And so that's it for today. Very nice. Thanks. Very nice. Yeah. All right, let's go to Doug Miller. All right. Doug. There we go. Go start off with what I did uh, last night. Do, 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 do. There we go. More. Yeah. Get it out so you can see it. That's as long as my arm is. I can't go more. Yeah, a little weed pot. Looks nice. There we go. There we go. I'll get it arranged yeah, right here in a minute. It's, I'm on one camera and looking at another. <laughs> but anyway, um, the bottom is uh, black limba. And the top section, the collar, is uh, uh, red mallee burl. And uh, did that one on live last night. That was a lot of fun uh, to do that. Uh, finished with with uh, wax, just very simple finish. Uh, but then today I wanted to do something different, and I had a, some wood given to me, and so <clears throat> work this little jewel out. Um, I think it's it's from cherry. I'm not real sure. As you can see, it's got a lot of splits and whatnot in it. Um, the wood was old and dry, but uh, even in the very bottom, it just it's all in the wood and it had some big worm holes or uh, worm trails that's what all of that is the dark there we go um no, so a little bit of it. yeah sort of um even that <laughs> vertical one that that's a worm trail as, as well caused a little bit of issue but it worked out pretty pretty good um i did some filling <laughs> with some coffee grounds I know she's got to be in the picture all the time. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I like I said, I think it's cherry just by the color and the way it cut. Um, but it really did not have any smell or anything to to let me know for sure. But uh, I'm going to call it fogwood just to be safe. Yeah. Nice. Like cherry. Yeah, it does. I'd say cherry. I said she has to be in the light. That's he. <laughs> We've got <laughs> brother and sister cats. Uh, bane of my existence but anyway that's what i've got for this week looks well, good I, very I nice there's a, Doug, there's a question were those are those hollowed out or just drilled uh this was just drilled i didn't uh it wasn't that big i um i, I drilled a one inch hole and that was about as big as i could get in there so uh that's that's just it uh the other one um uh, the black limba, this one, this one is, is hollowed. Uh, I use my hollowing tools and, and hollow that one out before I put the collar on the top. Right on. Hope that answers right, my question. Me, but I enjoyed your live yesterday. Well, thank you. Thank you. So you saw it go. <laughs> you yes, saw the black is. limba. <laughs> Very good. Yes. Right on. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to Mansfield. Hey, Bob. Hey, guys. Yep. All right. I uh, it's too hot here, so uh, I do little things. You know, I've got uh, three of these little uh, candle stands, so they uh, so they match. You know, they come in as a uh, as a set, and uh, that was all out of uh, walnut, but oh. uh, for one inch candles and. Uh, then I got into, I told you last week, I was uh, turning ring boxes. So I've got little uh, little jewelry boxes that uh, mm. I'm trying to make for Christmas. So I'm up to 10, but I've still got a few more to go before I get everybody's done here to make uh, make sure I got something for everybody. Yeah, there was a hint now. They're great to play with that uh, accents, like you're embellishing. Uh, you, um, 
oh, you know, Bob Moffat tools. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. Um, but get out, get out your knurling, Pardon? texturing, spiraling. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Got that first I've one got a table here with. Uh, yes. I didn't do a texturing tool. I've got one. I just couldn't find it. So I've just been using that uh, the knurling tool, you know, the uh, spiraling or whatever they call them. But uh, that's a Weezer. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, they make little nice little boxes. They don't take up much room. And, you know, they can put a few little trinkets in it or rings or whatever. And anyway, they even set them on their desk. That's all I got. Out of. Those a few little little items here. I I like these. These uh, you know, you, the bark all falls off, but then you still have all the little nubs, you know, sticking out. Yeah. So. Leave the character. Okay, but that was it. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. All right. Let's try Dave. If he is back, you uh, Dave George in Minnesota. Hey Dave. Um, hey Dave. Um, which, which Dave are you talking to? Well, I don't think it was you. I think it was somebody else. But well, then I'll you back have... out. Well, no. While we got you, I will okay. pop you in. You're okay. good. Uh, yeah, I got, we got a couple things. We again, we've been traveling quite a bit, camper, and and uh, trying to get back to the shop. But um, working with uh, some. Oh uh, my! Some... I like that. Yeah, a pretty a lot of, a yeah. lot of character there. Yeah, a lot of character, and I yeah, uh, nice. in, in regard to hollering out, it was coming apart on me. So you'll see some marks in the bottom because I had to stop. I I had the uh, the rim taped up pretty good, and and it was still I was fighting it the whole time. So I figured, well, take what I can get at this point in time. Nice and, and learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, and my wife's into uh, Trish is into uh, laser engraving, so she's trying to. Help me out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Nice what, what was it? Well, you know, I thought it was apple, but then I, I got to looking at it. I says, I'm not even sure anymore. But uh, uh, I have apple trees out back that I've cut a lot of this out of, and most of them look about like this, like a crab apple. So, right. but anyway, it was uh, it was kind of compromised. And, and then. Uh, what kind of finishes on that? Uh, actually, this is uh, it's a guitar lacquer. Uh, about three uh -huh. Three coats. Um, Beautiful. I get, it, I get it out of. Uh, it's. I can't remember where I buy it from now, uh, but it's. Um, it's a real high quality uh, um, guitar lacquer. It's, it's pretty nice. But I. Yeah. I, I was a little disappointed in here because I figured it's all going to come apart on me. So no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take 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 what it'll give me. So. Right. No. Anyway, nothing wrong with that. No. Um, that's great. Here's another one that I just uh, was finishing today. Is still on the chuck, as you can see. And uh, so I, I let this one a little thicker. It's the same type of wood. And um, I got the inside a little better, but it would start uh, this uh, opening side um, over here. I didn't want to get it any thinner in the wall because it, this uh, would have gotten a lot bigger and I lost some of this uh, here, which right. I really like. It didn't show well on the camera, but it's pretty nice, nice texture, nice color. Uh, and uh, so uh, I stopped, and uh, actually that was starting to come apart on me too when I was trying to sand it on the inside. But, so what I have on here is uh, uh, Mahoney's walnut oil, and um, uh, with a little bit of uh, uh, walnut oil mixed with beeswax on the inside right now. But um, you know I have to still I still have to take the, the tenon off, and uh, Trish will do the. Uh, the laser engraving, but anyway, uh, it's kind of interesting using some of this uh, wood that's uh, less than uh, uh, integrity is less than what you want yeah. to think. Yeah, it's, it's a learning Horses process. Is a, yeah, it's, 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 do light cuts. It does. It does. And uh, in fact, is the second one here. The, the first one, I was, I think, I was hogging it too much, and, and this second one here, I, I actually was sharpening more, and uh, I was actually. Taking lighter cuts all the time, and I got a lot better, lot better uh, finish on it. Uh, yeah. It's tool marks, so you know, it, I just need to turn more and want to get better at it. So it's it's a good lesson. And I, and I, this one here is um, I have no finish on it yet, other than I actually have uh, this is a um, juniper or red cedar, whatever. Oh, okay. Um, 
There's no finish on it other than I have some um, sanding sealer uh, on this one here. Oh my! And, and uh, it's a pretty grain. It's a beautiful yeah. grain, and I'm still trying to decide whether I'm going to do the guitar lacquer on it or, you know, um, the way it is right now. There's no tenon on it, so I may just spray the uh, the lacquer on it because it actually I, I like it pretty well, and the buff stuff's okay. So yeah, but this is um, yeah, I'd shine that puppy up. Yeah, yeah, that's that's as nice as yeah. And then it's this beautiful. one here, this one here, uh, I have no idea what the wood is. It's uh, from a local tree. Uh, my neighbor works for the city. He drops logs off for me every now and then, and and uh, I, I like this one here <laughs> because it's really strained up. And uh, all I have on that is sanding sealer, actually. And uh, I, have no, I have nothing on the inside yet, but it's, uh, it's uh, you know. The fact is, is like all the lessons that uh, I, I learned from being on here is very helpful. I just need to spend more time on the lathe and um, be more patient because uh, then you like sharp, sharpen tools and take lighter cuts and you end up getting a better product at the end. So but anyway, I, I appreciate that. I just want to share what I had um, finished and what I've been dealing with and, uh, and some of the stuff that's in progress. And um, I'll... Uh, I, I like the the kind of the fractured uh, wood, but it's uh, it, it'll, it'll keep you awake. Keep 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 you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It'll keep you awake. Anyway, yes, that's will. all I have. All right, great stuff, Dave. Good job. Thanks. All right, let's go to Randy Smith. Uh, let me. Uh, hey, my camera down a little bit. Uh, this week I got a new toy. Uh, this is a grinder tool rest from uh, Stuart Batty. The interesting thing about it is it has a trunnion under here with an adjustment knob on both sides. Uh huh. And it is solid and built like a battleship. Uh, it has three different, oops, I got to tighten that. It has three different. Uh, mounting uh, techniques. This one is for a Wolverine jig and uh, they make one for which has a flat plate that fits Stuart Batty's uh, things and uh, this is a really nice setup. I've been I've been uh, trying to sharpen some tools and uh, it is solid. It does not move and with my CBN wheel it just exactly fits in there. <laughs> but it is solid and very well made, very well machined. So just my latest toy. <laughs> Looks like the old Robo Hippie design. Well, it, it is very kind similar. of, but this actually has a trunnion on it. It's not really, yeah. uh, it, and, and it's solid. When you lock these things down, you're not moving that. Well, that's what they're supposed to be is solid. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so set it and, and forget it. Yep. And uh it work it looks really nice and works really well. So yeah. Happy nice landing. Landing. Very good. All right, Thanks, let's go to James. Hey James. How y'all doing? Pretty good, pretty good. How about yourself? Good, good. I've got a couple items. Uh, our club is doing table centerpieces for SWAT, and this year it's candles. So here's one that I've got out of mesquite. I like nice. that. Neat. Yeah. Uh, no turning on it. I just ran it on the belt sander to flatten it out. Hey, yeah, just little cheap, <laughs> cheapy um, uh, Hobby Lobby candles for it. Like that. that and then the cool. other one I've got I don't know if it's going to make SWAT or not, but it's a little uh, candelabra type setup. It's on okay. the base is a mesquite, and each candle is a uh, holly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and For all sure. the real, like, and all the real inexpensive candles. So right. y'all come to SWAT, you'll get to see a lot of different stuff for the centerpieces. Plus, you can take some of them home. <laughs> so, oh, nice. 
Right. Your holly That's stayed awful. white. Pardon? Your holly stayed white. I sprayed it with two cats uh, sprays of canned lacquer. Hopefully it doesn't get too dirty or get anything like that. Yeah, that was my concern on the holly. Okay. That's all I've got. So what is your best way to preserve the whiteness on holly? I'll go out there. I'm not sure. I'm hoping this uh, deft lacquer will work, the rattle can lacquer. Got a I've UV protection. It's got a UV inhibitor in it. It's, I haven't had it do a lot of color shifting. Um, it's just not the the white, but the, the other crisp colors. If you leave the grain intact, or a little bit like James just had, then you get those accents that will stand out. I haven't want to shift too much because you have to use a, a, a good spray with a good UV protectant in it. And sometimes those bargain basements don't have it. Um, I was surprised Ace Hardware Store has one that's really, really nice. Um, my favorite Ace Hardware just became a best hardware, and they don't have that brand of paint anymore. I'm going to miss it. Um, so. Okay, we we get we have a few things to chat about tonight. Number one is coming up for Labor Day, we have a photo challenge. A photo challenge is just your opportunity to show us, just like you're doing tonight in the gallery, is the photographs of the work that you do. Now you can always send us photographs of your work, and you always post photographs of your work on our Facebook page. That's absolutely wide open to all members. And members being anybody that wants to post something on our website, on our Facebook page, go to Facebook, Worldwide Wood Turners groups, and put a picture of what you want. But look, let me take a little detour here. When you do that, I really would like to see more than one photograph of your work. And I'd like some details in your work. Tell me how big it is. Tell me what kind of wood it is. How do you have it finished, et cetera, et cetera. Tell me something about your art that I can understand and share. Because, hey, I might want to copy what you did. That's what this is all about, remember? All right. But <clears throat> plates and platters. We want to see your plates and platters for Labor Day. That's right. I'm going to loot a bitty, bitty, bitty platters about that big that you can put teacups on. To the big boys, all those plates and platters. You see, it might be a simple block. It might be a, a, a drop off the end of a plank. It might be a piece of construction lumber. I do like platters out of two by 12. Sometimes you get some Southern yellow pine, some SYP that's got some nice um, knots in it. They, they really work out nice. You have to let them dry a little bit. Try them carefully and slowly, but do a platter out of it. Then play with your decorating skills. Oh, get your embellishing tools out. I mean, you could burn some lines and then you put some crest in it. You get your your L's, your uh, your sorby tool out and do a few um, swipes and some curves or uh, an embellishing tool like the what do you call it? The decorating genie. Uh, where you can push and use a bird tool to put marks. Decorating you can, elf. Uh, elf. Decorating elf. That's the one. Um, and you, you know, you can build one of those in your own shop. You can build a, a, the exact thing, and those burrs are available at, of all places, Harbor Freight. Just go for the coarser ones, not the finer ones, because and what you're cutting into and how you're cutting. <laughs> you need a ball bearing and, and a, and a a bushing and all that's hardware store stuff. And then just play with it. Yeah. So you do a plate or a platter and you put a little embellishment on it, then start playing with the colors. And this is something, I mean, you know what the scary thing is? Challenge Bob Moffat, Birdhouse Bob, into doing something like this. Your head will be doing this before the end of the day because Bob will take it and move it about nine different centers. 
He'd use his Duxbury jig to offset it about four times and turn it around and and then play with the embellishment tools. And all you've done is take a block of wood and made something that you could put on the table and put potato chips on for, 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 for the holidays or bring to a family. You're going to bring them something for the holidays? Put it on a plate. A little wax paper over if you want to save the plate. Whatever. Yeah, wax paper. They still make that. Um, but, you know, bring that to it. Make a plate or a platter. But show us what you have. So right around Labor Day, we want to see your plates and platters. Just one of our extensions of what we do. Because we want to see what you come up with. I don't. We call them challenges. But it's not a real challenge because... We can't do prizes. I can't give you anything more than a good, warm feeling to say, hey, look what I've done, because that's what I'm looking for. I want to see what you did. So we have that. It's coming up. And if you send us photographs, you can send you put it on a Facebook page. You can send photographs to our website, our world's greatest website master. Dave Rhodes takes care of our website for us. And folks, there isn't a better website out there for wood turning. Don't even go looking. There isn't one. You got it right here, worldwidewoodturners.org. Um, but Dave puts those photographs on our site. He also puts the chat from the meeting. But if you want to save your own chat in the chat thing, three little buttons, click and say save chat at the end of the meeting before you leave. If you save it now, it's only got what's in it before now. Um, if you come back later, if you leave it and come back, save it before you leave. All right. And he also puts the excerpts of our demonstrations and our entire meetings all go on our website. So if you miss a demonstration, you want to take it to the shop and look at it. You, you want to share it with a friend or a buddy. Um, you want to brag on it. Um, you, you think it's something that you just can't live without. Um, it's right. It's always right there. Free. And I got to point it out. Free. We do not solicit money to pay any of these bills. No, all these people work for you because it's your club. And uh, Heather says she hasn't heard of the ELF tool. Somebody got a, a decorating ELF available that they can give ever uh, give us a peek at. So I uh, yes, can yes, see yeah, I do. I do. Who, who I can pick was, up? Uh, Matt Harbor. Pop it up. That, is that you, Martin? You got it? Not hardly on one of them, but just while we're, while we're on with questions um, or answers, just before we go over the map for that elf tool, um, earlier on, somebody mentioned about holly, and I think it was Dane that jumped in and said, how do you keep it white? And I've just sent Dane a private message saying, have you got white holly? Um, do all the guys understand about keeping white woods. And it's probably something that the group might be interested in. Um, <clears throat> when we cut timber, when we cut a tree and we stack timber, we, we cut the tree through and through and we stack our timber on top of each other. And that's how everybody dries timber. With holly or other white woods, we don't want to stack it like this. We need to dry it like that. And the reason being, the sap has got to drain away from holly to make it white. So if you've got holly, it's probably a green, browny, horrible kind of colour, or it might have a lot of staining in it. You're just drying it wrong. If you, when the tree is cut, the minute the tree is cut, mark the bottom of the tree. Put a little V in the bottom, get it sliced, and then stand it up. If you stand it up, the sap will drain out of it, and you'll end up with a nice white piece of holly rather than a stained piece of holly. Um, just for anybody who doesn't know about white woods. It's that. Certainly in England, it is um, holly and sycamore are both stacked. Not touching each other. We still, we still put um, air sticks between the boards, but we stand them up. So we stand them up, we'll put an air stick, 
we'll stand the next one up, we'll put an air stick, we'll stand the next one up and put an air stick. So the whole thing, if you imagine stacked on top of each other as you would normally stack them, but vertical. And vertical, the way that the tree grows. And that's how you'll end up with white holly. So anybody who's got holly lying around, laid down, will probably end up with a brown, green, stainy kind of colour. If you do want to keep it white, or you can, most lacquers will slightly, but if you've got good holly to start with, you will keep it white, um, even with a lacquer on the top of it. If you start off with a true white, it will stay white, um, depending on what lacquers you use on top of it. But but try and try and get as white as possible in the first place. So if you get the opportunity for holly, get it cut, make sure you know which, which way it was growing, stack it up, um, and you'll get much better timber out of it. Um, Matt Harbour will do that elk too, because I haven't got one to hand. Thanks, Martin. I lucked out on that, because that's how I got my holly stored. Yep. Outstanding. Lots of people, because ultimately everybody understands that when, when, you, when you cut a log, you stack it with the air sticks between it. Um, holly and sycamore, certainly in your part of the country, I think it's, um, you talk a lot about this. Is it maple that's very white? Yes. Is it, is it the maple? You see, I would imagine that you would get really quite a nice white colour if it was sand, if it was still um, over here, holly and sycamore. Um, sycamore is even worse than holly because you've got to brush each board. So as it goes through the mill, we take all the sawdust off it as well before we stand it up to try and get it as white as possible. Oh, good to know. All right. Good to know. Thanks, Martin. Has somebody got a decorating elf that they can? Matt, I got one ready. Got it? I do. There he is. To go. Never mind. So this, is, this is a Henry Taylor decorating elf. And uh, the, the business is this burr at the end. And it, the, the tool comes with three of them. And it's got a little bearing here. And then there's a magnet behind it. So this is just sitting in here to the magnet. And basically, you put it under the, under the wood. And it, uh, it leaves a pattern. And you can, you know, depending on how you rotate it, into the wood is is how it leaves the pattern and uh it likes coves so what you do is you cut a slight cove or you find a little cavity like like on this bit here if i was to do it like up in here it likes those sorts of cavities to 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 feed into and that's how, that's what that's the henry taylor decorating elf right on that thanks is. matt yep okay uh eddie it's top of the hour um we go to our safety and our quick discussion carry on from last week so we can get to our demonstration without our demonstrator being shorted right and we're going to keep it this is first we're going to do the safety minutes sue is our safety director she's a volunteer a member of our club who does this for us each week sue covers topics that are relevant to wood turning and uh, we have Sue, Sue's with us, I believe. Yeah, Sue, I'm down speak. here. I'm All right, here. there we go. Go ahead, Sue, please. I don't see you. You there do not have a... <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, you could never go overboard with safety, but we sh and I sure did last, last week. Uh, I know that uh we all want to be safe and we all want a consensus and we're all adults first of all i'd like to thank kent for taking the time to show us what he's done for the aaw and i'm sure the aaw is appreciative of what he has done for them and the other clubs that he belongs to how he brings safety to their clubs while we have members that are associated with the AAW, we have members that aren't. But basically, the Worldwide WoodTurning.org organization is us. We are not affiliated with the AAW. That being said, a bunch of us wrote back and forth 
this week on email, and we basically all had the same consensus. And if you look on our homepage, there has, uh, there's a bunch of tabs up on top. And if you go under facts, you will see safety moments. Dave Rhodes has done an over and above job in redoing the safety moments page. He, he made it so that there's, that there's no question on what we have on safety. It's, it's, got, it's brief, but thorough. And I think anybody that has read it this week will agree, Dave, you did a fantastic job. And I can't say enough about the page. So thank, thank you. And uh, for everybody else, just read the page. It tells you everything that we need to do. And uh, I'm just glad that uh, we've got members like we have. Thank you. Be safe this week, fellas. Well said, Sue. Thank you so very much. That is from a member. And just like I said, we're all members. We all have Thank equal you, votes. Equal. We all have opinions like elbows. You know, you all have them. And, uh, and that's why we meet each week. Share information. The bottom line cast last week, all the brouhaha and my wife my manager, my, I hate to use the term, my caretaker, put the word to me last Thursday evening that if I didn't resolve this matter that we spoke about last week, that you'd be here without me. Um, because we're not here, I'm not here to be your master or your your leader or your member or tell you what to do or what not to do. And you're not here to tell me what to do or what not to do. That's not why we gather. We gather to share information. We gather to be friends. We're out on a tailgate telling lies, sharing stories, showing our work, bragging on our tools, lies and all. And that's why we gather each week. And that's why we want to keep gathering each week. And we want you to bring your friends. We really do. I don't want to say, yeah, you can't show that. Get it. No. Um, I, it, the whole thing is, I want to see it. I want to see how you do it. And I want to tell anybody no. Because it's all going to help us. It is. Good, bad, and different. It's all going to help us. Just now. And we go to the world's finest when we go for, for lessons. We go to wood turners. People who know how to turn wood, who do it well, that show us ideas and tips and tricks. And when those folks do show us their ideas and tips and tricks, it's their version and how they get there. As we do a demonstration, we'll do one in a few minutes. Uh, I think it, Matt's with us tonight to do his demonstration. Um, Let's watch this demonstration and see what it does. And then if you've got questions or comments or ideas or changes, follow this demonstration when we have a little chat time. Let's jump into it and see what your opinion is and how you want to do it. But first, let's let Matt show us what's going on because he, 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 he did a lot. I, mean, I think, do I have the share screen up? Let me see. This is what is coming up in our newsletter right here. This is Natural Edge Bowl. He did. Matt Harbert did this. This is a piece that we're going to be talking something similar to in just a little bit. What you see not only did a demonstration, but then he provided us with this information for our website. So you got it now and you got it forever. So Matt, if you got your 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 late fired up and you're ready to go, I'm gonna one of the co-hosts is gonna mute everybody. And then you'll pop back in. And folks, we do that so that we don't get any background sounds because if Jeopardy's on in the background, it'll come over and, and mess up Matt. <laughs> we don't we don't want to distract him, folks. He's got some problems keeping going. So we we don't we don't we don't, <laughs> we don't want to sidetrack him. I mean right. so uh 
So we're going to mute everybody, then right. bring Matt back up, and then we're rocking and rolling because it's WorldwideWoodTurners.org. Go ahead, Matt. All right, Matt, I'm going <laughs> to mute everybody. All right, I'm uh, unmuted. We got you. Hey. All right, thanks, y'all. First of all, how's my audio? Sounds good to me. All right. Audio is great. Okay, so this is a... Uh, uh, I will I will switch over to the document here so y'all can see it. Uh, natural edge offset bowl. Um, there's my contact information. Um, this came from uh, a piece that I did and showed last week, which was done in the same way that I'm going to show tonight. Um, let me switch to a different camera here um, and show this piece here. So the piece of wood and the one I'm going to use tonight. What did I do with it? Here it is. Um, these are all, these are from the same piece of wood. So you can see it's not a round piece of wood, okay? So those are my favorite because you get some really interesting stuff out of it. And what what my process will show is it'll show you a way, and this is, it, it's very, it's pretty simple. It's just basic bowl turning with a little twist or two. You're gonna end up with one side that's longer and higher, one side that's shorter. Now, because of how I position things, I have one side here, that came awful low, a lot lower. So I'm going to show you ways to address that also. Um, and this piece here I did this afternoon, same piece of wood. This is there's no sanding on this. It's just tool. Um, it's a little bit different and a little bit better. Um, but you can see that I got the sides on this side a little more even. Okay, Let's see if I can show that. Um, and I did that by a little bit of a change in how I and how I did the centers. So all the magic happens really at the very, very beginning. Um, and I lost most of the bark. So this is scorched with a, with a torch, mostly. And I lost pretty much all the bark. <laughs> C'est la vie. Um, so, so this is a piece of what I'm gonna use tonight. Um, and like, if you were trying, gonna try to center this, and I, I would center it like on the pith, like here. But what I want to do, and, and the thing that gives me this the higher sides is I shift it one way or the other, okay? And you guys see that? Yes. Okay, yep. so, and because I've got one side that's a little thicker than the other side, I wanna shift it towards the thicker side too. So what I'm gonna do, and, th and this is, uh, you know what, let me do it on this side. Um, I like this better. So there's my center, okay? Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift it. I'm gonna pick this side. So I'm gonna shift it away from that side. Now I'm gonna shift it, <laughs> I got myself. Yeah, I want this high. So I'm gonna shift it towards that side, I'm sorry. <laughs> so there's my center. I'm gonna shift it about a half inch or so. And I'm gonna shift it this part looks thicker, so I'm gonna shift it on this side. So that's where I'm gonna put my center. So I'm, I, I'm shifting it towards the thicker side and towards the part I want higher, okay? Questions on that so far? Who's on first? <laughs> Ow. <laughs> now hit your foot. Yeah. That's okay. I think okay. you got some t tennis shoes on instead of clogs. Right. Um, yeah, and he's got some substantial support. So, uh, so, so all this, the center shifting is being done on the headstock. So I'm going to find my center there, and then I'm going to center it here, basically in the center on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my tenon on this side, and that shift that's happened at the headstock will will happen, will stay that way shifted the whole time. And you, it doesn't have to be a bowl, it can be a vase, uh, you know, it could be anything. But what you, what you want, what you're working on is you're gonna get the tenon. So the tenon is offset. It, it, well, the tenon is, is, is where you want it to be, but it, the piece is offset on this side of it, if that makes sense. Questions? I got you now, yeah. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is make a tenon. Now, um, 
you don't have to put a pedestal on here like 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 this piece has got. Okay. Well, yeah. you, can, you can just you could just take it off at the bottom, no problem. Um, all my documentation has got a pedestal on it, but all I'm doing right now is is putting in a tenon. Yeah, not like that. I'm not. Man, I don't know if it's the weather. Nothing is staying where it's supposed to stay. Nah, it's because you're demoing. Yeah, <laughs> you know this this thing worked so flawlessly this afternoon. I had a friend of mine ask me, he said, hey, you ready? I'm like, oh, man, I'm so ready. Nope. And I'm using my little, my little guide here. I got a little guide here at the end here. The inside ring is 10 in size, and I'm just using it. I'm eyeballing it. Then I'm going to square it up for the dovetail. Make sure this side is the shoulder is flat that fits on the top of the jaws, and this side is flat. And then we're going to switch it to the to the chuck. Questions, concerns, confusions. Concerns. If you really didn't show us the rings you had on the other end, I understand what they're for, but some people might not. Repeat that. The rings you got on the tailstock end to uh, to size your tenon. Oh. You know, you didn't really explain it, but you need to. Yeah. This is just a this is just a simple little tool. The inside ring is my minimum tenon size. The outside ring is my minimum recess size. If the outside ring fits in a cavity I've made, the recess is big enough. If it's bigger than this this inside ring, it'll 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 fit on the tenon. And I the big hole is so it fits on my quill, on my tailstock quill. Which is where I store it all the time. This is the Thank second you. one because it's it's one point the first one ended up in the shavings and I lost it. So <laughs> thanks Matt. Yep. <laughs> I know I, I've shown it in a lot of my demos, so it's okay. Paint it so, orange. What's yeah? That's a good idea. Okay, so let me switch to to the to this document here. So this is the basic shape I'm going to go for. I'm not going to do uh, the pedestal at the bottom. I'm just going to do a, a simple bowl, but that's where we'll start. Um, so and this is a cutaway view of that. Uh, basically, the interior of the bowl follows the out exterior of the bowl. Um, the notes here are that the uh, uh, the rim edges will be altered by offsetting the centers, and the pedestal is not necessary. Okay, um, so and the, the, what we've just done is we've just made the tenon. So you offset the headstock and then make the tenon. And my note says that all of the uh, all the offsetting is done at the point in time where the uh, where the tenon is turned, so and it drives the rest of the asymmetry uh, on the on the piece. So, uh, this is my final slide in this in this presentation. Um, and basically, what you're going to be doing is you're going to cut the outside of the bowl first with shearing cuts. Uh, you start the cut off in the air, and you line it up. And your goal is to get um, to get as much of the bark in, included in the piece as you can get. Um, and then it, I'm not going to put CA glue on tonight, but if I was going to apply CA glue, I'd apply it before I started the interior of the piece. All right. Any questions on this so far? Matt, I got to ask. You offset towards the side you wanted the longest. That's the wrong way, isn't it? I'm a little foggy, Bob. Um, maybe. <laughs> I okay. offsetted it. The offset is actually, oh, it slipped. So it's not even where I wanted it to be. No, I offset it towards where I, the side I wanted the highest. So the side that you offset it to is going to be the highest side.
but it, it slipped when it was in the chuck. So it's now kind of on the other side. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. So um, let me show you that. So I don't know if y'all can see this. Let me see if I can zoom it. But it's not where I originally put it. <laughs> Just so you guys know. I don't know what's going to happen here, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's what's going on. <laughs> can you reseed it? Not now. I've got the, I mean, I could cut a new tenon, I guess. Hey, if you drop the ball, you pick it up and keep going. Let's yeah, we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens with this. It's still not in the center, so um, it's it's going to be interesting because it's now it's on the wrong side. So uh, we'll we'll see what happens. So I, I, the piece you is going to be is it's going to be more like this one with a with a with a with a short side now because of where it ended up. So like Eddie says, we're going to roll with it. So I can still show all the techniques uh, that I want to show and uh, in the hows and wherefores and so on. Anything else? No, spin it up, Matt. All right. So I warned you all about confusing him. I did. I warned you all about confusing him. You did. You did. It was terrible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my cuts in the air. I'm going to start cutting here. I'm going to line up my cut and start it in the air and cut into the piece. Now, I would do this if I was cutting any kind of uneven bark or like a burl or anything like that, I will start the cut in the air. I will try to get it lined up. So I'm doing a shearing cut and I'll start the cut in the air. And I want to start in the middle rather than up on the edge because I want to try and not, I want to see where, where my, my piece is going to end up, where the bark is going to end up so that I know how far to take it one way or the other. Uh, I hope that makes sense. So um, I'm going to start cutting. I'm going to start cutting in the, in, in the air, in the middle. And I'm going to take light cuts because I've got an uneven piece here. And feel free to ask questions at any time. What kind of speed are you running? Uh, I'm over a thousand. Things are starting to shake. We'll see. Oh, yeah. So, and let me show you what I, what this looks like on the, on the piece of wood. So I've got some parts of it that are cut into the bark, but some pieces that aren't yet. And this is why I start in the middle. Okay. So that I can get, make sure that I've got the bark everywhere I want it. And you can tell where it's going to be low. It's going to be low here. So I'm, I'm concerned because I want bark all the way around. So I might take this a little lower yet and we'll see. Okay, I'm all the way through now. Um, I can tell because I'm no longer bumping on the cuts, if you will. It, it goes smooth right about there. So this will tell me where, where, I, where I am. Okay, so I'm all the way through there. So that's my low side. So now I've got to be worried also about my high side. So I can take it up here, but I don't want to go any higher than that and save that. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm I'm cut, I'm scribing an arc like this. It's a, a circle. I, I'm basically using my left hand on the tool rest as a fulcrum and doing the Turner's dance so that when I'm down here, I can now do an OG into the bottom if I want to. And this is where I am so far. So that I don't want to go any higher than that. So I've got some, some mold in there, which came pretty quick because this is only down a couple of weeks. So I'm probably going to lose that bark, but I can fix that. Okay, so now I want to finalize my bowl shape as much as I can because I've established my, my parameter here and my parameter here. Okay, is that clear to everybody what I'm talking about about that? I got you. Okay. okay. Any questions, please ask at any point. 
So again, I'm just, I'm taking a light cut with the tip of the tool in a, she in a shearing cut. So, and I don't know if I'm gonna get creative on the bottom here. Now, this next cut is a pull cut and it is also a shear. And I, I wanna get this up on an angle and cut it with the side of the flute because I'm trying to clear up. Ah. So and some of this stuff will have to be fixed with sanding after the fact. I'm getting some tear out here. Let me see if I can clean it up going the other direction. I think I'm pretty happy with that for now. I can get the rest of it later. That's a good smooth surface. Can you get that bottom out of the way so it's not messing with your cut? No, I don't want to get it out of the way yet. I want to keep it as solid. If I got to hollow the inside yet. I see. Um, I, I want to keep as much meat as I can here. And I don't know what I'm doing with this yet. I haven't decided. So. Get one more pass here downhill. Two more passes. Trying to clean up a little bit of tear out I got here, which may or may not be possible. So that's 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 pretty that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Questions or concerns at this point? Nothing noted. All right. Anything in the chat? I can't see it. No, there's nothing in chat so far. All right. I'll so we're out when you're ready. Yeah, I'm going to get this. Well, you know what? I'm going to leave. No, I'll take it out now. Um, okay. So let me switch to this camera. Raise it up a little, maybe. Eh? <laughs> let me get my, my, uh, my Turner's elbow device out of the way. Matt, am I correct in that the uh, tenon is also off center? Well, the or tenon is, it, it was originally turned and it's, it's, it drives the asymmetry, it, 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 the, the, the non-symmetrical nature of it, if that makes sense. So the okay. whole piece is off center because of where we put the tenon. All right, now, is it the same off center as the top and bottom? No. <laughs> Uh, the tenon is is on is on center, but it's tilted. Okay, it's on center, but it's tilted so that I get the I get the edge where I want it. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Yep, I got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. So, especially when whenever you're turning any anything that's 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 uneven or offset, make very sure that you've got. Uh, you spin it to make this not hitting the tool rest. Okay, so there's a, there's a couple of cuts you can do uh, on pieces like this. And one of the things you'll, I mean, I'm gonna start with a, with a push cut going into the center. I'm gonna start in the center and push cut into the center. But I'm gonna vary back and forth to clean things out and make room. I am also going to drop my tool handle, which raises my, my inside flute of this tool here at the very end to take a light cut to make to clean things up on the edge is a light shearing scrape if you will all right so these tools will drill so i can do a pull cut like that which very quickly will hollow out the space and I can do a push cut into the center 
but this is a little because you're you don't have a bevel to ride on this is a little less less easy this cut is actually cleaner a pull cut but at some point i'm going to have to have to do a push cut in to clean things up something's rattling here might be my machine oil <laughs> problem with having a very useful container nearby is that you tend to fill it up with all sorts of things. Sure. One of Murphy's laws, I think. So it was one of those things I just took out. And you know he's not going to get a catch because he got that worldwide wood turner's decal right there on his leg. <laughs> I'm thinking that that increases the possibility of a catch. I don't know. Ah, don't mess with us, bud. <laughs> so it's your fault, Eddie, that my uh, lighthouse fell apart. I got a catch because I ain't got my stickers yet. Uh, that was a wood problem, Brenda. <laughs> no, <Thank> just... <laughs> I've been there with walnut, man. That's the, you know, that stuff will come apart. You get those cracks in it. I don't like turning it because you don't know when it's going to smile back at you. Well, Brenda was turning end grain too, which is entertaining. Now, one of the things that I'm watching here is when I start when I start going with the inside of the bowls, I'm going to be watching the shadow of the outside of the bowl as my guide. So there's the push cut to the center. Ah. Now, one of the things with this, because this is uh, end grain so in addition to all the other handicaps we got going on we got end grain um the center of these of these pieces the pith is kind of chewed up and I, I don't know if you can see that but it, it's it, it's there's it's it's hard and it's it, it's chewed up a bit in the center so just pay attention to the wood when you're doing these was that box elder Man. Yeah, this is Box Elder. Okay. Now, my problem with the doing this in a demo is that I want to rush it. <laughs> I want to well, get to where I am. Yeah. You got, you got plenty of time. You're, you're not rushed. Okay. So, when you get on the edge, because you're dealing with with an uneven edge, you've got to take really light cuts and speed becomes your friend. And you can't push very hard. You can't push too hard at all. God, that really hurts. So again, I'm starting in, in, in the air in a shearing configuration. Okay, I get my tool rotated, so I'm getting a shear on the tip. So let's show that where I am right now on it. So I'm not quite out here at the edge yet. This is still the top of the piece of wood. So, and I've got some uh, interesting sort of bark things here. And I'll show you one of my favorite shop tools for this fuzzy bark, a pair of scissors. I have a green pair just like that. Yes, <laughs> right, there you go. Shop scissors, I buy the cheapest ones I can find, man. <laughs> you can coat them in CA and they make an interesting feature. Yeah, well, yeah. Yes, absolutely.
So, and again, I'm watching the outside shadow, trying to gauge where I am. And not lose all my bark. I, I do, frankly, I do expect to lose most of the bark, but I expect to be able to keep the natural edge, which I can then augment with a torch. So let's have a look. I can show you. So I'm almost there. Got a ways to go yet. Any questions about this so far? No. Nah. And I'm looking at shadows here. So, and then the cleaning cut is, is up here like this. Let's have a look. Okay, I wanna go, I'll try to go a little thinner. Famous last words, right? All uh, right. Stand by. So you can see how steeply I've got the tool tilted. I am getting a, a cut here, but it's a sheer cut. I just lost bark. Just lost more bark. That's a sweet cut. It really is. So you can push until you're right near the edge, more bark. So, and this is a very, very light cut through here. And all I'm doing is just sort of cleaning up the edge when I, when I do it. And, and, and you sort of, you're, you know, you're, you're working with a feel there and you can see all the bark I've lost, but that's a pretty decent, a decent end there. I don't know if y'all can see it, but I'm not unpleased with that. Okay. So that as I move out, as I move out with the cut out to the side here, I, I decrease the pressure. It's a, it's it gets lighter, and I, I can hog up at this point. But as soon as I get near the edge, I've got to I've got to go light, 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 light. Okay. Now this is awful thick here, so I'm going to try and and go go tight, go closer in here and make and thin this down. So let me see if I can do it with pushing in. All right, let's see how we did there with the thinness attempt. That's that's decent, although it's a little thick here still. I don't know if you all can see that, let me switch to this one and show you. So this is what I'm looking at. It's, I don't know, three quarters of an inch here or, you know, five eighths, but it's thicker here. So I don't know if I'll be able to get a consistent thing and I got all this fuzzy stuff sitting around. So. And that inter is interfering with my cuts. So I'll use this tool again. <laughs> I 
Interesting, eh? Um, okay, so I've got to make that thinner up in here to get that thinner. Okay. This is going to be interesting because I'm, I'm a little thin on the edge. So we'll see if I can get it done. without blowing it up. That's pretty thin. <laughs> I better be careful. <laughs> I can see in the shadow how thin it is. So I'm less than a quarter of an inch thin here in, in this part of the wood. So I, I, I'd best be a lot more careful than I'm being here with that. Questions, comments? Just a little off the top. All right, let's switch back to this camera here. So, all right, I need to clean. I don't know if y'all can see this, but I've got some, some fuzzies here that I need to clean up. So I'm gonna come back with that cut again. This way. That's probably pretty good. I see a little tool, a little bit of a tool mark here. All right. And then from that point, it's just, you know, basic bull stuff, get her done. I'm, it's very rough in the center here due to the piss. One of the things you also have to be careful of and watch for is you got to watch these spinning edges because they're there. And if you catch them with your hand, you'll pay for it. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'll just probably sand that out. Yeah. All right. I'm doing something I shouldn't do. Which is be way out on the on a thin on a thin wall of a bowl. And it worked. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Okay, this is a this is a little this is a little craft torch, a butane torch. Uh, and all I'm going to do here is I'm going to scorch the edges of this. Let's switch to this overhead. Hey, Matt. So, Sue, yeah, my fire extinguisher is right here. Hey, Matt. Yes, ma'am. Heather says she just sat down for break. So can you start the demo over again? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got one more piece of wood. <laughs> I'd be worried about even all that fine sawdust on the lay bed and stuff. I would be worried about that fire extinguisher or not. It's soaking wet. It's really wet. So I, I hear you, Scott, but it, it's wet. <laughs> so that's why I'm not worried about it. All uh, right. And it's sticking to everything. So this is just water. Making sure it's out.
So, and just for you, Scott. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, fire in the shop around the lathe is a dangerous thing. You gotta really keep an eye on it, be safe as much as you can. So. Yeah, you're yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, especially if you're yeah, if, especially if you're using fire in any way. All right, so I'm going to put a small foot on the bottom of this and take it off now. Any questions on this so far? No. All right. I like it. Yeah, so you can see that I've got I've got one end. Let me back this one up a little bit here. If I can. Uh, let's try this. Nope, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Okay, so you can see this, that I've got one side is longer and higher than the other. Okay, so it, it's, I, I've accomplished my goal here, and I was correct in that one side is going to be a lot lower than the other side. Okay. That's got a good look. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very interesting. It's 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 got a very good look to it. So let me get this right here, so I can get in here. You make it look so easy to do. Yeah. Well, and and one of the keys to turning anything like this, where you're dealing with natural edges or uneven oh. wood, is that you want to be able to, you know, the, the faster you can go, the better you are, be, and take light cuts. So you know, let the tool don't let the wood control what you're doing. Let the tool make 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 it make it work if you know what i mean so and i've got enough here that i could probably do a little pedestal but in the interest of time and energy and not putting anybody to sleep i'm just gonna gonna take it off oh you're not gonna make a pedestal you want me to make a pedestal yes yes <laughs> yes okay as you request you really shouldn't have asked for a vote there man uh <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mind. You know, you guys, That's you know, I, part. I'm not That's watching the part. time, so. They got plenty of time. Okay. Oh, we don't worry about that. We don't worry about that. We worry about the, the demonstration, so. All right. So what I'm going to do nice is I'm going gonna, gonna to make sure that, that I've got enough room on the bottom of this piece to part it off. Okay. So that's going to be the bottom of my, my piece. Let me check make sure I'm all the way through on the pedestal because I don't think I am and I'm not. Okay. Go a little thinner on this. So. All right. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to sort of round this off a little bit. And then I'm going to going to make that curve work really well and blend. Oh, watch your fingers, Matt. Okay. Detail gouge. Let's put in a little bead here. And let's make the pedestal come up to it. And let's get out the old picture hanging wire on handles burning device. One brief little move made a major change. Yep. Added a feature. Yes. So I got to clean that up because I've got a little bit of tear out on that little bead, which I can see. I probably could have done that with sanding. That's all right. So, and I like to round these things off. I don't particularly care for really square ones. 
and I like to bevel things, so I'm going to undercut this a little bit this way. Makes them appear like they're floating on a table rather than sucking down to it. Yeah, and I want this to be a little concave, so I'm going to concave it with the edge of my tool there, using it as a scraper. And then I will take my handy dandy Benjamin Best parting tool with the super secret grind on it, which y'all have seen a hundred times, and undercut secret. this. Secret. Secret is 15 degrees. Now everybody knows. <laughs> So one of the things I like to do with these with the parting tool is I will use the side of my parting tool as a sort of a scraper to round off corners like that. So it's already at an angle. So I'm actually getting a slight shearing angle as I do that. So I get a fairly clean, fairly clean scrape. And because of the, the, the slight tilt to, to my little parting tool here, I can get, I can undercut this pretty easily. And we're going to go and cut the rest of it off with the handsaw. Yeah, I thought I saw it walking around a little bit. Yeah, it started to bend. Yep, so there, there's the piece. Ooh, see what those two little barn rings did? Beautiful. Good job, man. A little bit, a little bit of modification. You can turn that in, turn something like that into a uh, gravy, gravy bowl. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Very nice. I like it. Okay, so um, the little parting tool. It's just a simple Benjamin Best parting tool, but there's a slight angle on the on the end of it here. And I don't know if y'all can see that, but that angle is 15 degrees. I tried a couple different ones. And the one I like the best is 15 degrees. And the tool itself was $15 new. So I figured that I could, I could shred it to my heart's content and not, I wouldn't be too bothered about, about it. So uh, this is how I use uh, the torch to simulate having bark on a piece that loses the bark. Um, questions on this at all? Would you sand and finish that on the lathe or do you let it dry and warp or what, what do you do? I, I will sand much of it on the lathe. I will sand the interior on the lathe. I will sand the edges on the lathe, trying very hard to not roll over the corners, uh, either either this way or this way, okay? I want these corners crisp. I want the bark to look, you know, crisp, okay? And then, yeah, I will sand as much as I can on the lathe, and then I will sand off the lathe. Um, I have some some sanding mandrels and cylindrical tools that I use. For instance, this is one of the cylinders. This is, is it's got a metal core, a, a foam around the outside, and you just buy cloth back sandpaper, and you wrap it around and lock it inside. And this goes in my Fordham, and they make them with one eighth inch shafts. I have some for the Dremel too. So I use these, and I use, I also have um, soft, the, the normal mandrel, the more normal, normal sanding mandrel I use has got like a hard foam. This is pretty hard. Okay, you see it doesn't hardly flex at all. The soft foam flexes a lot. Okay, and this, both of these you can buy from Kling Spores website. Um, I make some of my own. For instance, this one's made from a, a engine valve. Okay, um, but the soft one will allow it to follow contours a lot better. So. The soft one, I can I can sand up in here, power sand up in here, and and control intimately where the sanding is being done. If you follow what I mean, because of the way the contours of this, uh, you know, uh, follow the follow the follow the surface. So it would be sanding, not shaping. Well, I, there's there's shaping, and then there's sanding. I mean, some of this, like I don't know if y'all can see this real well, but there's some there's some fuzzies in here that would need to be probably cleaned up a little bit. And there's a tool mark in here that needs to be cleaned up, but it's not that deep. And it's something I can clean up pretty quickly with 100 grit or 150 grit. So, uh, I, I mean, typically I would do that on the lathe. You're right, uh, uh, 
Jim. That's that's where I would do it. Do you um, let it dry? You let it dry then, and then uh, finish it, or yeah, um, this because of I mean, uh, y'all can't see this. Let me let me switch to. I don't know what'll show the right view here. Maybe this. Nope, nope, it's not gonna show it. <laughs> All right, let me try something else. Let me go with this camera and pull it off of here. Maybe. It's locked, there we go. Okay. Um, I don't know if y'all can see that. Nope, you can't. It's thin. I can I can see through this. Let me see if I can. There you go. Yeah. So read the paper I, through I, it. Yeah, when I was seeing the see, saying I was seeing that it was thin on the lathe, that's what I was seeing. I was I was seeing how thin it was. So let me switch that. Stop. Sorry for the vertigo, folks. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> like a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> waiting in line. Find out which way it goes in here. There we go. Okay. <laughs> what will you use to hold a piece on the lathe after you, when you start sanding? Well, I, I would sand it while it was still on the lathe. Okay. Still, I'd sand as much as I could still on the lathe. So I can sand the interior. I can sand the bottom of the interior. And I can sand these outer edges if I'm really careful and make sure that the sandpaper isn't rolling over the uh, rolling over the over the edges. Do you understand what I mean by that? Yes. Okay. So let me switch back to overhead, um, maybe. So on this piece here, I'm sanding sanding like this as it's coming around. Or as it's coming around, I'm sanding like this. So it's it, I, the sandpaper is not rolling over the edges. It's keeping the edges crisp, okay? And the same on this side, if that makes sense, okay? And and then, I mean, clearly this this I could sand with hand sand it on the, on the you know, with without using a mandrel on the lathe. Um, so, but then once it's off the lathe, then, you know, I sit at the bench behind me here and and uh, and sand there with the mandrels and with the with the cylinders. So with the cylinders, with the cylinder, I can I can I can go like this sort of motion here, and I can really shape a contour. Um, I don't do a lot of shaping off the lathe. Come on, ideally you want to do as much shaping as possible on the lathe. And with 100 grit on the lathe, you know, you, you don't want to, I don't want to spend 100, you know, spend hours shaping, right, with sandpaper. Um, but the beauties of these is that it'll, it'll, it'll let you follow a contour at will. So I can angle this correctly so that I'm following the contour, a little bit of pressure, and I'll get a, a really good sand. This is 400 grit, by the way. So, um, you know, I, I could clean this up, and it's box elder. It's fairly soft, so it'll sand up pretty pretty easily, so. Right, yeah, folks. Normally, you know, like like other pieces that you do, all the sanding is done while it's still attached to the lathe. Yeah, you don't dissect it from the lathe and then put it in your lap and commence the sanding. Matt, do you have a link to those sanding those sanding tubes? Um, I, I or cylinders. I, I, I will. I will find. I've got one, one or two that are still in the bags. I, I will find them and and set them up and say I'll send you Bob. I'll send them to you Bob. Okay. I'll, and I'll send them to the website. So, or maybe I'll find it here. You know, after after I sign off of, you know, I, I've got okay, some around you. here. Yeah, but there's a couple places to find them. Um, uh, I don't think that Klingspore sells them, but I I don't know. I'll, I'll have to find out where I got them from. So, when when I first bought them. Uh, there was only one guy making them. He was making them in his basement, but now now people are making them commercially. So, actually, Matt Harbor Freight has them in the set of about six or seven of them. I love them. Well, they what they have is these is these other ones here that are on. Oh, yeah, that's the one I was talking about. Yeah, with a tube in it. But let's see. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's got is a. Is that tube. the one with the metal sleeve in it? Yeah, it's got a paper on. Yes, and, and you have to buy the sleeves, which is not that big a deal. No, no, they have the one like you had before with the 
with the oblong metal piece that goes in and you fold the paper in it and then trip it and fold it over them. They have them in sets with about six or eight of them in sets going up to like two inches. Well, I'll have to go I've, look I've then. That's, that sounds great. That's really nice. That sounds great. Yeah, I, I mean, I love these because, you know, you can choose whatever sandpaper you want to put on them. And I've got, I've got some, I got several of these the same size and I've got one with 400, one with 320 on it, one with 220 on it. So right. I buy all the sandpaper from Clint's for and you can make anything yep. you want with them. They're really nice. Yeah, but they do I, have, they're like 20 bucks for five or six of them in a kit. Okay, well, I'll have to look that up because that sounds like a really good deal because I think that I was paying like 15 bucks for a single one, so. Okay, members, that's what our chat is about. If you got an item like that and you have an item number from Harbor Freight, you can put it in our chat, folks, and then we can look it up because you can order Arbor online. Or when you, when you get there, you can give them the item number and they'll look it up for you because they do have a pretty good inventory system. Yep, I even have I even have small ones that I use on my uh, on my microcarver and my Dremel. So they've got them a bunch of different sizes, and you just cut the sand whatever grit grit sandpaper you want to fit them, and go from yeah, there. Yeah, I don't think that kit comes in real small ones. Harbor Freight's real close to me this week. I'll take a picture of it and show you next week. Sounds great. Very cool. I've got that set you were talking about, Matt, from somebody that made them out of that basement, like. Uh, Years and years ago, they were, yeah. I, yeah. I wish I could remember his name. It was Keith, somebody. I, I do too. They're they're bulletproof. I mean, I've been using mine, these for years. Yeah, when they had to clean out the shop, uh, it was in the scrapings off the off the floor, and guys, I was picking stuff up, and the guy said, "Oh, that's all junk." No, you don't understand. It's <laughs> not junk. All right, I got I got something to show you guys here. I found what you got. What you got? All right, here, let me go, let me switch to this camera here. So this is this is one of them that's all right. He says it looks like foul play studios, and foul play is spelled F-O-W-L space P-L-A-Y studios. Okay. So this this one here is clearly a quarter shank, a quarter quarter inch shank. So this is one I'd use on my on my on my uh, Fordham. Uh, but there's there's this there's a uh, and, and this is what you know this is one of those with the key inside and, and you lock it in there. So foul play makes me believe it's from a duck carver's group. Right, exactly. It's somebody who's making. Oh, there you go. There you go. Reg Dorrance Company. GregDorrance.com. I'm bringing it down a little bit. Screen capture, folks. Now. All right. So there, there you go. <laughs> There's one source. Right on. Outstanding, Matt. Thank you very much. All right. Any other questions for me? Members, anybody got any questions for Matt? No. I'm anyway. glad we kept going. I kept. I'm glad we kept going with that demo on that piece because I think it came out wonderful. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, and it did exactly what I wanted it to do. So you know, I mean, how do you argue with that? You know what I mean? No. You, can't, you can You can see how thin it is. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great demo, man. Thanks a lot. Oh, My pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity, yeah. and uh, I enjoyed doing it. Oh, well, always. Thank you. We'll get you. We'll get you signed up again here real soon. I'm sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Yep, my pleasure. All right, Captain, let's go back to you. As always, folks, he is a member of this group. Uh, we don't pay for demonstrations. We ask our members to come forward and say, "Show us what you can do," and we just saw it. And, and, and I get a kick out. So, how did you do that? How did you move that over? And all that. You, you know, he had a plan going in, and something didn't work out just right. Guess what? Took the ball, punted it, and still got the field goal. And it was pretty good. I like what he came up with. So, you see, it doesn't always have to get straight in lines before you kick it. And I, I think Matt did a really good job for us. We look for that. If you got a demonstration you want to do for us, 
or you'd like to share a tip or a trick or whatever, and you say, all right, I got something, but it's maybe five or 10 minutes long. What makes up an hour? A whole bunch of five and 10 minute pieces. And that's all we look for. And you may have a tip or a trick here that we don't know about. I mean, just now he pulled out the little sanding drum and I have those. And it's the same one. And when I got, when I ordered them, it's a long time ago when I was doing a lot of uh, mo modeling work and, and, and puzzles and stuff. But I was looking for some detail work to work out curves and stuff that I could work with on my Fordham. And that's how I got them. And I've always thought that this will be handy when you do the inside of um, if you turned a, a box or a jar or a lid or whatever, and you, you got it all sanded down, and then a couple of days later, you realize it grew some fuzz, you can go and clean up the fuzz. So those little tools are nifty. We got a couple of sources for them. And now you've got the sources also. And that information will be here on our website and our chat. And before you leave tonight, save the chat, put it away. I don't think Donald is with us in Australia tonight. Uh, but Donald says, save the chat. That's how it goes. Um, tonight's demo was pretty good. We got a good one lined up for you next week. And if you'd like to get on schedule, the way you do it is, I want to do a demo. Put it in chat. Dane Chandler sets up our chats, sets up our programs, and he'll contact you, put you on a schedule, get you all lined up. And we'll get you put into the program. Now, if you have something to share with us, that's a tip or a trick or an idea or a jig or a rig. I mean, we we were talking about the the little the the, the detail gremlin or the the, the 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 detailing elf. Um, and we had three or four members say, "Hey, I got one right here. I can show you." That's what this is all about. Because not only can you, you get an idea, you see how it works, get to thinking about it. Some of those tools that you can make in your own shop come up with, and it comes from these, you know, a little thinking at all. And the same, now, all right, so you look at that, that detailed gremlin, and you think, what else can I do with that? Well, take the, take the, the, the burr out of it. Take the burr out, all right? And you got the handle. It's got a bushing and a bearing, you know. Pivot line. Well, let's take your little pad sander that Matt was using a few minutes ago and snap because it will snap right in. It snap right in there, and then you've got a self-powered sander. Uh huh. So you see, you've just made a tool handle that's almost non-restricted. You made it yourself. It's handy as can be. And it's, it's very versatile. You can do a lot with it. So give those ideas. That's what we, we talk about. And each week we share ideas from members. And one of the fun ones, what we do these projects every once in a while is we call it trip, tips and tricks. Well, we ask our members to bring on something to show us. One of the, really, the push has been to call it the Jim Duxbury Hour. Um, <laughs> we go to Jim Duxbury's shop and root around and see what he's got because uh, he's always come up with these little things. A while back, he showed us a the Duxbury jig, and it was an offset eccentric jig. And the details on how to build one is on our website. But if you get a, a copy of the recent, just came out, Wood Turning Magazine, this is the British made version of Wood Turning Magazine, um, a really good wood turning magazine, not art, wood turning. Um, you, you, you'll see these articles by Jim Duxbury, which includes these items and other projects. And they're all simple projects or projects that novice turners can get into, but they give you ideas and technique of where you can take your turning. And if you if you check that out, somebody put it in the chat tonight. They ordered theirs through Amazon, but there's a couple of other links where you can get it. And you get it, um, and you won't get the paper copy, or at least I don't. I have it. I get it on my iPad, and I can read it, and I bring it with me. Um, we mentioned plates and platters, gallery photos. We've talked about it. Um, if you got something like to show in gallery tonight, throw it in there. 
just say, I have something to show. Um, and Matt Hawk, you know, sometimes when you find a bad penny, you just can't get rid of it. You really can. Um, we found a bad penny. It's Matt Hogger. Really. And I don't want to get rid of it. I want to I want to see if we can polish up this bad penny. Matt, do you have a decorating elf available that you can show us a little quick demo on? Because we talked about it, but some folks say, yeah, I don't understand how that thing works. Do you have one available? Absolutely, Captain Eddie. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, all right, bad penny, show me. Okay, let's switch to overhead view and pull my camera back a little bit to show. This is a piece of what I think is spelted maple, something in my shop. Uh, it's just been trued up. So the way that I, I will do this is I will, I will put it against the piece of wood like this and drag it to create a texture. So this is it on the on the uh, on the spindle. And it's created a texture that looks like this, which you can't really see. What speed were you turning at? I was probably turning a little too fast. Um, you need so, to keep them at about 500, right? Yeah, it, below 800, I think that they said. Um, so let me try and zoom in this. I put my thing away. Hang on a second. Um, da, 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 so they Eat get your heart out, Bob Moffat. Look at that. Well, I'm sure that Bob has one of these and, and uses them. But there's the texture on the face. So. Uh -huh. and, and, and and one of the things you can do is yeah is you can you can start off at one angle and then change the angle and you get a changing texture so that was about 500 which is about right so that was interesting let me do over here so it's changed up a little bit, and let me go on the on the on the face. So the angle that you have the tool at makes a lot of difference. Thing here. Let me go to this camera and zoom in. Any difference with side grain or end grain? Well, um, I haven't really noticed any on the, on the consistent woods. I mean, if you've got a you know, a, a funky piece of wood. So if I'm at an angle like this, then I change my angle. Let me see if I can do this right here. I'm going to change an angle, put an angle up here like that. So one of the things that this tool comes with is it comes with a, a brush that has the, let me see if I can find it here real quick. There it is, or maybe not. All right, it's not where I thought it was. I'll have to find it. Um, the, the, it's a, a hairbrush that has the bristles all cut off, okay? And what you do is you then take that over the texture. So this is, this is the tech, can you guys see that? Not very well. I really okay. like these. So one is at a, at a not so steep angle. And one is a little steeper angle. So I've got two different textures here generated by the same tool on the same piece of wood with a little bit different angle. Okay. Questions? Am I still live? No, that's yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. I appreciate you showing that, Matt. I, you know, I, I appreciate it just for what Cat Meddy said. Uh, I don't know exactly how they work, and I appreciate that. 
Yeah, basically and, all you do is, is you just you just simply put the tool into the wood. Yeah. So so and and you, the things where it gets real interesting is it gets real interesting in the middle. Now, Matt, that's the actual elf tool you purchased, right? That's correct. Ooh. And does that have a one eighth inch shank on their bits? Yes. So you can basically replace that with any carving bit with different radiuses yeah. and get different textures. Ooh. Yeah, I, and, I, made, and, I, I, and, I made mine. I just did, drilled a, I found a inside diameter uh, <clears throat> bearing that was one, that was one quarter or one eighth, yeah. Yeah, and they're, they're carbide tools. Um, and this came with with that that brush with the bristles cut off, and and it came with three of these burrs. It came with this spear one, which I like a lot, so I leave it in there. It came with a cylinder one, and it came with like a flame one, uh, you know, big at the yeah. bottom, going to point like a teardrop. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. They're handy to do decoration with, just like. Add that to the bottom of a cup or a mug or a bowl or on the edge of a platter. Um, whatever design you put on, you throw magic right on top of it, right there. And if you got something that went kind of, uh, went kind of weird with grain or cracks or whatever, that's a concealment detail. Yep. And, and you could do things like you get out, you know, a point tool or a skew or something. And and you can you can you know you can define your your textures. You can change you know you can say okay I want to put a little groove in there between them here, and then one here, and then one out here. You know, and it changes things. So uh, there's Great a lot you can do. Top. What's that? Yeah. Great way to dress up tops. Yeah, yeah I, it's, I, it's I use yeah. them for making tops a lot. Yes. Yeah, tops and uh, box top lids, uh, yep. the tops of things like uh, vases. Medallions. Making yep. medallions. Yeah, exactly. There's a, there's 100, 101 all. uses. Yes. So e that's e space A-L-L. -L. Hey, Matt. Yes, sir. Paint one and then do it and see what you get. No, I've done that. First. I've done that, Joaquin. Uh, Joaquin. Yeah, uh, to show the people. Uh, I'll have to I'll have to dig it up, but one of my favorite things to do is to paint paint gesso on it. Well, I don't mean paint, but your marker there. Mark that blank spot and use that elf on top of it. Oh, on top of the paint? Yeah. All right, with the marker. Yeah. yeah All right. Good. Take that out the, the outside white rim there. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Put it right in there, real dark, I, dark as you can. I know what you're getting at, Joaquin. I do that too. <laughs> In some cases, it works out better. I don't know that it will in this one. Yeah, this black isn't working real well. So <laughs> I may have to have to. I don't know what I did with the pink. Maybe it's on the ground in the shaving somewhere. <laughs> but, uh, works real good with sorby. Yeah. Yeah, the two are not dissimilar. They're very. They're pretty close. Uh -huh. All right. Let, I put that away already. Let me go dig it up and. Yeah, they operate the same, you know, the same uh, same speed and holding it the same way like a scraper. And yeah, one of the temptations is to is to just jam it in there and leave it for a little bit. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's that's cool. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <Yeah. laughs> uh, okay, let me zoom in on that so you all can see it. Whoa. It's a little clearer. Uh, I, I like doing it that way. Um, yeah, I do too. Because you got shavings and everything there that you're trying to paint over, a roughness. Yeah. And it seems to leave a clearer design. Very cool. Yeah. I bet it works real well on stuff like black lacquer and stuff like that too. Yes. It yes. Does. Especially on a harder wood. Very like cool. Sorby, Matilic, Sorby, Matilic, yeah. Marking pins. Put that on a top and then do this to it, it really makes it stand out. And then with the sorby spiral spiraling tool, um, or the spiraling cutter, it'll it'll make a nice clean cut to the actual raw wood. Yeah. And everything else is colored on the outside. Makes a sharp contrast. Good job, Matt. 
Thank you. Yep. Uh, and I'm sorry it didn't. It took. It didn't. It took more than five minutes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, Matt, Matt, the whole the whole evening was enjoyable. Very enjoyable. I'm glad you yeah, liked thank it. You. Thank you. My pleasure. Very enjoyable. <laughs> it's what people get to take home with them. Take away with them. Right. That's right. See, we when we when we get a chance to get a demo, we take a demo. Uh, <laughs> we do, <laughs> um, and and folks, that stands for anybody. Anybody's got an opportunity. Everybody's got an opportunity. And if you got something to show, share with the group, uh, explain or detail out. Uh, just jump right on board, um, and we we like to help you with it because we're here to share not lecture, not proclaim or anything else, just share, want to see. That's a nifty little thing. And somebody said, do it to tops and, and stuff. If you're, a, 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 all right, Brenda, stick with me. You've done this and you had that little blowout thing around the top edge. And you, you kind of got your heart broken a little bit over it. You've got, a, a detail like this, you can run it or to re retrim that around the top, go in and run that that groove, that detail groove around and change the profile of your piece. And guess what? You took what hit the floor into a little piece of art that fast. Yeah, amazing. So we're showing you little techniques uh, on how to get into these, these things and how to fix them. Um, Terry already threw up the quick change drug drum set from Harbor Freight. It's uh, not as small as Matt's number, but he put that in the information is in the chat tonight. So before you Ooh. leave tonight, go ahead and save the chat because that's what we do. You see, it's in here. It's where you need it at. You got a gallery item you want to show tonight? Pop it into the into the, our chat and say I've got something to show, and we'll we go right to you. Hey, Who is? We well, we got. Uh, well, we got this famous guy here, you know. Keep talking famous. about him getting published and everything, but is it you know, famous oh, guy right here? Yeah. Is, is it famous or infamous? infamous. I'm waiting for his wife to come on. How you doing, sir? She's got a piece, but she won't show it tonight. Oh, oh no. She's hiding. Rita, it anyway. I want to see it. <laughs> jo Joaquin started this last week. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. This, uh -huh. this is done on yes. a I don't know, piece of about two inch thick, whatever. But uh, that one's offset about half an inch. Um, this one's the same kind of thing. This is done with a duck jig with a tenon on this end and the offset so that it's tangent on this side. Um, this is an offset vase. Uh, it, it, it takes a vial in it like that. Nice. Whoa. I yeah, like that. I like that view. Yeah, yeah, that's neat. Anyway, this this one is done. This has a common center on the bottom here, and it's offset this way for the first cut and this way for the second cut, but on the common center. This is the same thing done, only this this is this has one center here. <clears throat> it's offset this way for this cut. Then I went back to this center and offset this way, you know, this way for this cut. So you get a thicker, you get a thicker lower edge here. Lower turning. Oh, I see. Yeah. A little different. Lower base, yeah, yeah, yeah. A more me. They look oh, really. I think I've shown those before. That's this quite is, the rabbit hole you can go down on that. It, oh, you can go nuts doing it. This is <laughs> that hurts my head. This yeah. is a ten center turning. Oh um, my goodness. Anyway, I was going to put ears on this and make a cat out of it. My wife said that's no. terrible. You can't do that. But I'll make one one of these days. I'm going to put ears on it. Anyway, it's, it's good. I love your, your wife is right, Jim. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> she usually is. But anyway, there's 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 one center of the piece, and there's three centers here, three centers here. That's six, and two centers here, 
eight, nine, and ten on the other side. So it's a ten centerpiece. Wow. And it's, sh it's shaded in black in back. Um, another thing I'm going to do is you hold your airbrush or yeah, your airbrush real low and spray spray one side at a real low angle, spray it black and spray the other side red. And as you let, walk by it, you see red to black. I've done it on a, a, a prototype piece, but uh, anyway, just as fun. That's is, cool. Uh, the mounting was on a, uh, a flat uh, plate, a uh, base plate. And the screw holes were like in here, this was square. So there were screw holes in here. Yeah. So you can shift it all around and do whatever you want with it. But uh, okay. That's beautiful. That's nice. a fun. <laughs> yeah, badass things. That it's looks like great. a good demo, Jim. Yeah, it is. I've shown those, I think. I think I've shown these other ones. This this is done on a the Dutch J too, but this is a uh, four lobe five center turning. Each each one of these is is a setting. Um, on the Dutch J, it's the same setting, same offset, and then the piece is indexed on the tenon. On the yeah, on the ten. Cool. So four would be ninety degrees each way. So, and each each one of those is the same lobe. <laughs> and you can go nuts doing it. This is a, I forget what this. This is a six center, eight center, something like that. But <laughs> same kind of thing. Hmm. Good stuff, Jim. That's it for me. All right. Thanks, sir. Thank you much. Can't wait. Can't wait to see what you show next week. Yeah, me either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to let's go to Wisconsin. Hey Scott. I just wanted to show on handmade elk tools. I made my own. So that's just a piece of pipe with a bearing in it and a magnet to hold the, the tool in. And then I made one out of an old broom handle, the same same general idea. Mm -hmm. Nice. So you can, you can save yourself some money if you want to make your own. That's a good, good idea. idea. Good you idea. Use, good everybody's got bearings. You could use your old bearings from your uh, bandsaw. Yep. So, so this one, if you get the right size bearings, all you got to do is push them in here. And then I took a hammer and just peened the end of that brass pipe over so that it couldn't pull the bearing out. Right. Yeah. So, Smart. So, so that bearing floats in the in the pipe a little bit down to the magnet. The magnet I glued in from the other end. Oh, that's cool. So and you could put a handle on it if you wanted it longer. Right. Good idea. I have to make new. I, I don't have any of those. I got them. So. But it's it's pretty easy to make out of that brass pipe because it's thin enough on the end that you can peen that over and just hold that bearing in. Use a ball right. peen hammer and hold that bearing in there. Yeah, it's a real economical way to hold that bearing. For sure. Thanks for sharing. That's all I got. All right. Let's go to the professor. Professor Rowe. Oh, you know what? He's got his hand out. Watch him. He's got his <laughs> hand out. We, you know, we've experienced this with this guy 199 times. Give me, give me, give me. This is meeting number 199. And 199 meetings ago, this guy came and met us. And he used to wear a lot of green outfits, uh, a whole lot of green. He's got a green hat on, but it was a different <laughs> company. Um, and he had his hand out, and he was looking for gimmies. And he's back again, folks. This guy right here, this him right here, he has got his hand out looking for freedom pens. 
That's right. Freedom pants. Doug is retired At least he's Army. Not the Army. Hey, the Army's never recovered from letting him go. All right. I mean, you know. Or maybe but, they're doing better than ever. <laughs> they're <going> either. <laughs> All right. But Professor At least he's Rowe. Not wearing a pink dress. <laughs> hey, don't start him. Don't get him started, please. <laughs> but Doug, Doug Go collects Doug. pens for Freedom Go Pens, Doug. and it's a Go. there's a there's a fall <laughs> mission to get I pens to our troops this fall Go, Doug. for oh. the holidays. So this is it. So yes. here's here's my my quick sob story. As Eddie said, I, I I am retired now. Um, my infantry battalion is heading over the pond again, um, and specifically, my company was Charlie Company. A lot of those guys in that unit that are going were my soldiers. As a matter of fact, the first sergeant of the company now of charlie company was one of my squad leaders when i was a platoon sergeant so i still have a lot of uh deep connections in that company so that's who i want to prioritize the uh, pens for if i get more than i need for that company then of course i'll i'll start feeding them to the rest of the battalion um it's when i left it was about a 600 man battalion i i honestly don't know what their strength is right now um but i'm i'm gonna try to raise about 150 pens and that I know would would get my company covered okay. I called the the first sergeant I said look it's bugging me I know you guys are going again and I'm not going with you but here's what I can do and uh, I stepped up to be their family readiness group leader person so essentially I'm just going to be the the go-to person when families need to call somebody to say, hey, what's going on? Why haven't I heard from my son? You know, whatever. Then hopefully I can, you know, answer those phone calls for those people and just do what somebody did for my family when I was gone. So that's that's what I'm looking for the pens for, for the troops. The address is sent to you folks is in our chat tonight. It's in Pres Prescott Valley, Arizona and just send your pens put a card with your pen tell them who you are give them a note of thanks remember you're thanking the people that make your freedom work work you you're thanking the people that give you freedom and uh, they serve at their pleasure to serve you so please jump on board turn one pen turn 50 pens whatever you can turn Every single one, really, a beat this drum, every single one does matter. And it's not a bureau, it's not a it's it's not a BS thing. It really counts. If you've been there and you received the gift from home, you understand what it feels like. So get on the other end, give it to them. So all right, Doug, what else you got tonight, sir? I'm sorry. Um, I'm I did make something this week, so I made a uh Odd shaped bowl. I like that. Wood material. So I don't know the specific um, ficus, but it's a ficus tree. Um, it's normally an indoor plant, at least out here in Arizona. That's how most people grow them. When you walk in the house and you see a tree inside the house, it's usually a ficus. Um, this one has gotten so big. My buddy had transplanted it from pot to pot until he didn't have any pots large enough, and he actually planted it in his yard. And they wound up moving. They lived next door to my mom. And when the new owners came in, they cut the tree down. And my mom went over there and she said, can I have some of that wood for my son? And so this is like the, this still has the bark on it. So you can see kind of the, the color of what, what it was. It's not a, a very pretty trunk at all, but it did have some really gorgeous leaves on it. At any rate, my buddy has no idea that I have the wood. And that I turned that into a bowl for him. So hopefully nice. here sometime soon, I'm going to show up at his house and give him that. He gave me some other uh, construction lumber when he was cleaning up at his house that I'm also going to turn into a bowl for him. But I think Pretty that good, one's going to a lot more to him. Yeah, it will. Mm. Good job on that, by the way. Mm. 
Yeah. That's okay. That thing is beautiful. What would you put for yes. a penny shot, Doug? Uh, that one's just sanding sealer and spray on lacquer. Wow. Take that hat off again. <laughs> Look at the hair. Thank oh, you. yeah. He's, he's on his way to a man bun. <laughs> It'll never happen, Eddie. Never. I'll I'll do the faux hawk. I'll do the Albert Einstein. I will never, never have a man bun. We all have our limitations. That one's my. <laughs> I'll wear a dress. I'll wear a bikini. I'll wear high heels and earrings. I will not wear a man bun. That crosses the line. <laughs> and folks, we he's been around with us for over two hundred meters. So tell us how you really feel one. about man buns. <laughs> Don't sugarcoat it. Don't get me started lying. My boss says man buns are done right or sexy. That scares the hell out of me. <laughs> All right, thank All right. you, Doug. Body is Great quickly feed. running out of sexy. And I don't think that a man butt is going to bring it back. So. <laughs> no, no, I, don't, I don't think so. In either. the 80s and 90s, this thing looked pretty good. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, let's see. Go to Joaquin, the American dream. Hey. What's up, buddy? Well, I got a story to tell. Tell off on me, mainly. Uh, no, I don't see me there, I guess. Oh, well, I lost you. Hold on. Okay. I might fix you I'll get you back. I got you here. Okay. In the right. Jim and I have been messing around with these uh, ducks, uh, chucks, and uh, a couple of months ago, I, I demoed this at our club, and uh, they were impressed, and like all, we've been impressed with it, but then uh, I told y'all last week that Glenn told me, hey, Joaquin, you got the demo. Uh, for Saturday, you know, three day notice, and I said, "All right, what am I going to do?" And so, you know, like Jim was showing this offset uh, vase here, I have to cut this one off. I said, "Well, I'll just demo this, all right, but I'm going to use that other design uh, offset." And so, this is the other design of it. And so, I got this in the lathe. I have it going like this, and have this chunk out here. And I shoot it over there to three quarter inch offset and I'm going along here, I'm turning the air, everything's going just fine. And then I said, hey, we need to drill a hole. So I went in there, started drilling the hole. And you see that hole? And then it, it goes off. I can't find center, you know, it starts walking on me. And I said, hey guys, what's the matter with you? You're supposed to drill a hole first. I, went, I did this on purpose just to see if you guys would catch it, which I didn't. I totally <laughs> forgot about it. You know, when you make a tool handle, you drill the hole first and use your six degree to keep it dead. Right. And that's the cardinal rule. And so I, I totally blew it. Wasn't able to drill the hole because it's so far off. And so I still got complimented for a good demo just with the mistake I made, I said. So, you know, <laughs> if you haven't ever thought of the first panel you make, drill the hole first or anything, right. maybe this small. Uh, we were discussing this in the uh, UK meeting today, you know. It's easy to drill a hole in a square, but in something round, get dead center, it's pretty tough. And yep. uh, although I have been successful at it on different woods, just this wood was not forgiving for me to mm -hmm. walk off. I can take it out and fix it in my shop, but I couldn't do the fix there at the clubhouse. That, uh, did you have a real long, long, do you have a real long drill bit? Was it drill bit shattering or? Oh, no, it just, it's just wood. It's real dry and uh, a real, oh, I see. yeah. And it just, you know, it's probably kicked out down instead of drilling. Eight, you know? And so I couldn't, yep. uh, I just give up on it and told them, you know, hey, you know, don't do this. <laughs> it only happens in demos. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, all things considered, that's pretty close to Joaquin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know how it is when you're doing a demo, though. You, you want everything to go just right. Every, don't forget nothing. And so. yeah. <laughs> now, I wouldn't know anything about that. Yeah, I know. It. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> still so fresh in your mind, huh, Matt? Yeah. <laughs>
Well, like I say, no, I redeemed. Our, I like you guys our, all said, I redeemed myself pretty good, so I'm yeah, happy. She did. <laughs> yeah, she did, she did fine. He did fine. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Joaquin. You bet. Nice job. All right. Let's go to. Uh, let's see, Jeff Allen. How are you doing tonight? Hey, Jeff. Hey, how's it going, Joaquin? How you doing? Good. So I'm not sure. If, I'm not seeing me, so I don't know if y'all are seeing me, but I'll go ahead and throw a piece oh, Somebody clicked you off as I was clicking you on. Keep there we go. There you are. Okay. So um, when I was up at Ron Campbell's uh, retreat, I was I was turning a, a footed bowl. And I don't know if I can get it where you can really see the three feet there. But yeah. uh, Turn this as, as a, a sample piece of what we were going to do for our project. Unfortunately, we kind of ran out of time. We got the foot done. We only had a single foot, but I told them how to do the carving to carve the foot. But I brought it back home, and I, while I was there, um, Walnut Log, uh, Jeff Hornig was there, and he had some, uh, some of the chameleon paints from Tiny Turners. Uh, and I don't know if you've seen this stuff, but I'm trying to see if the light gets really good in there. Yeah. It really changes colors. As you move that in the light, That's cool. did you get the the, the mica dust or the flakes? I just got the dust. I didn't get the flakes. I, I tried. I saw one with the flakes, and I didn't like the flakes. I but I really like the way the dust did. I just did the dust. I, I got you get the um, you have to get the glue on there first, and then you, then you paint the yep. dust on. Yep. Yeah, it nice takes work. Up, I mean, this small little vessel took about a third of, of one of the containers of dust, so it takes quite a bit, but it's still oh, pretty cool. But made, made, yeah. made a little cauldron out of it, you know? Yeah, very nice. Now you, got a cart. now you need to turn yourself a witch on a broom. Right. And then, in keeping with our theme for this month's club a meeting, oh, we, we did a bottom hollowing piece. Pretty, that's what I put. And for, so, okay. had a nice piece of poplar here. And uh, this is hollowed from here up first. I think I've seen you before. <laughs> and then we flipped it around. You're welcome. And, and hollowed out the top there. Nice. That little piece came out nice. The piece I've been getting the most comments on Facebook about is this piece here. I turned a goblet out of ash, and then I burned it, and then I uh, went in and stained it a dark red, both inside and out. The black, the outside was burned, the inside wasn't. Uh, but then came back and put a liming wax on it after I did a lacquer finish. Uh, and where I brushed out those lines and really gets this, especially down here in the bottom, that texture really looks kind of nice. That, that, that works good. good. So, Beautiful. just three little pieces I got to do. That's the fun of being a weekend right hunter. You don't get to do a lot. You can do some. Hey Jeff, on, on that yes. ash piece right there, was it yes. cracked before you burned it or did it crack after you burned it? It had some fine line cracks in there. And when I burned it, those cracks opened up. It, this one here is probably a. Yeah. I hear probably about a, a quarter inch wide, and as it cooled back down, they closed again. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that's, been, I, that's been my experience as well with ash. Yeah, I but I kind of like the cracks. I, I think it it kind of makes it sells it, to be honest. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she got love cracks. That's yeah, a very that's, that's that's a great piece, Jeff. Very nice job. Yeah, nice I, job. I, I, I like the liming wax effect. Yeah, I love the liming wax. I want to try. I want to try it with a gold liming wax, but I got to buy some. I only have this. I only have the white right now. <laughs> Something else to try, Jeff. Um, one of the things that I've done with the gold, if you like the gold, and yeah. this works great on things like ash and oak with open grain, mm -hmm. is I mix. I took some gilt paste, if you've got any gilt paste, and mix okay. it up with with a little bit of uh, denatured alcohol, so it dissolves, and then wipe it. And it's it's, okay. a, it's it's not quite as obvious as the liming wax is on that piece there, but it's a real interesting, subtle sort of, you know, it gets in everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was almost wondering if you could take that white liming wax and add a pigment like a turquoise color and make some other colors with it. I didn't know if you could use the alumilite dyes on it and color that liming wax or not. It'd be worth trying. What? Because uh, because the white is a great media for that. What is the sol? I, I've got some liming wax somewhere. What, what is the solvent for the liming wax? Is that also DNA or alcohol? I don't know, but I'm going to need some because it, it got into the cracks on the inside, and I want to try and get that cleaned off so I can get that <laughs> off of there. Yeah, because theoretically, whatever the solvent is, you should be able to dissolve some in there and then add some pigment to it, and that should make yeah. whatever color you want. 
Yeah, I want to kind of clean up the bottom a little more. You can see I got a little messy down there at the bottom, but I'll clean that up. Yep. That's but, beautiful. Very cool. I had fun. Yep. Yeah, three, three little pieces I got to make this weekend, and then back to work. Love it. <laughs> oh, by the way, I, I, I too have a homemade elf tool I made for all of eight dollars, and and this is a one eighth inch shank, uh, so you can get any of your carving tools. And uh, I have two bearings in mine and a magnet in the bottom, but I think I got the bearings for about five bucks and the magnet for three. Amazon, you know, and then just turn the handle. Yep. I, I love them on tops. That's all Thanks I got. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Jim. Jim. They look good. All right, Eddie. Yes, sir. Give you give you a fair warning before I come back to you. <laughs> I'm awake. I'm awake. Really, really, really. Um, see, we we oh, not only oh, you know what? I'm sorry. You know what? Let, let me get in my quick announcement. What? What is your announcement? So next week we're going to do some some real quick short demos. Um, so it can be on any gamut of subjects. Uh, holding something sharpening something, uh, what you would do in whatever particular circumstance, but we're looking for five to 15 minute uh, demos. We've got three lined up already for the program. Um, so if you're just wanting to get your feet wet, now is the perfect opportune time to be able to show something real quick that you do that's handy, you know, in, in what you do. If it's handy for you, nine times out of 10, it's going to be handy for somebody else in the group. Um, so if you got something, even if it's been shown in the past, you know, show it again, you know, but with your spin on it, your twist on it, what makes it work for you. Um, and then other than that, you know, so that's, that's, that's what we got lined up for, for next week's program for demos are just going to be some real quick, real quick, intuitive, informative stuff that either we don't know and we want to learn or stuff that we've learned and we've forgotten and we need to relearn. Um, so tune in, should be a good program on the demo side. It's always a good uh, program on the gallery side. And of course, when we got Eddie, it's always a great program. All right, Eddie, <laughs> back to you, buddy. Yeah, always. <laughs> well, you know, we have fun. We sit here, we share, we tell lies, like that lie. And we have a good time. Um, tonight we we got it. We had a pretty good demonstration for Matt Harbor. Then we took it a step further. S somebody mentioned the, the the detailing elf or what, the gremlin or whatever, and, and and I get confused about titles and names and things that you can make. And then we had at least four members show us ones they have made in their shops. Uh, for a uh, pittance of what you'd pay if you bought a tool retail or through a catalog service. And that's what we look for. So if you've got a creation like that, next week is a perfect time to come on and show us your, your tool. Just, it takes a few minutes. You can do it with your iPhone. You can show us. Yes. And you can just explain what you've done, how you've built this jig. We rely on that. We like that, and we all learn from it, and and we, we that's why we we get together. Um, I'm sending out tomorrow. I just I'm, all night long. I've been a little busy. I have to keep the busy going, um, and I've been packing stickers, and I got 20 envelopes of stickers. One of our members is funding me to mail. 20 envelopes of stickers. That's 10 stickers per envelope to members who are going to be attending SWAT. Now, they're going out tomorrow morning in the mail, and they're going to these members so they can distribute them at the Southwest Association of Turners, which happens in four weeks in downtown Waco, Texas. My opinion of world's greatest wood turning symposium. But better than that, it's the, it's the world's greatest conglomeration of wood turners guys they have nothing to do but sit on a tailgate and tell stories and share ideas and it's it's it doesn't have a ton of rules and a bunch of regulations and 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 stuff it's just 
in 30-something clubs to get together and talk wood turning. That's it. And that's the beauty of it. We want to have our name out there, Worldwide Wood Turners, because we want to get them in here and get them to share information. Where did they come from? Where did you come from? You heard about us. You talked to a friend. You saw it at the club or whatever. Help us spread the word about our club because it's your club. And that's the important thing. It's not a hype. There's no money being made. There's money. There's, you know, we're just here doing just what we started for 199 weeks ago. We come to get together to share ideas and details. Next week, we got that little mini, little mini special. Mini special? Yeah. You see, we can call that the mini special. And we can put that in the same line as the Duxbury special. Because, you know, we're going to have the Duxbury special come up again. Um, and but we we're looking. At, this is it's not select folks. Anybody can do it. And everybody's welcome. Really like it. Um, you have a, a, a unique, a unique way to chuck something. Chuck. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a really unique way. You do? Well, are you, are you sharing or what? What's the deal? I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share it next week. Oh, next week you're gonna share and the chucking. It, yeah, next week. It'll remember take like five minutes. It'll take remember, five minutes. Remember the rule: if you can hold it, you can turn it. That's right. That's the deal. Somebody earlier said, "How would you hold that piece that Matt turned tonight?" How would you hold that to, to sand it on a, on a chuck? Um, it's interesting. It in, Eddie, if I wanted to hold it and, and do work on the bottom, I'd put it in my vacuum chuck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It got me thinking, how would I do that? Suppose I don't have a vacuum chuck. What do I have? I got a block of wood. Do I have a sanding yeah. pad? Yeah. Do I have a mouse pad? Do I have a shelf liner? Um, you know, Yada 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 yada. All these stuff. All I want to think about is how can I grab this piece and hold it and work on it. And if you can hold it, you can turn it. But just Matt said, I hold it in my vacuum chuck, put it up in my vacuum chuck. Man, before I was, I'm a great fan of vacuum chucks. I love them. But before I did vacuum chucks, I used to do. I would say it was a dead man chuck. You know, I turned something to fit it, put it up there. I, I, I was working in a lot with a large architectural firm, and it was mouse pads all over the place. And uh, whenever I saw a worn out mouse pad going out to the trash can, I'd, I'd take it. And people thought maybe I was just a poor guy with a computer. No, mouse pads were awesome buffer material. And until I found a source at Home Depot that had the mouse pads and rolls, they go in your toolboxes. They sell them in the tool section. They go in um, the roll around toolboxes to keep tools from jingling and moving around. Um, they had that, that fabric in them, but they work for really good for a buffer. So you can push up against them and it doesn't leave burn marks on your pieces. And if you push, if you made a dead man that would match the inside of that bowl, some slightly, you remember you're, you're going to make a nice even pressure on it. Then you pushed up the the bottom of it with a, uh, a, 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 a a real dead man or a spinning center, uh, the wood center. You work right up to that center without making contact with any wood. You can trim the whole thing off, pull it around and go the other way. It'll, it'll work out really good for you. So there are ways to hold this stuff. And we're looking for those tips and hints. If you can got one, you got an idea. Um, we'd like to see you show it to us. Um, pop, out, pop it out and share it. I see at the, uh, the late in the program, because he's probably been out playing with his archery, um, is uh, Cade Bolger's popped in. He's out of Ontario tonight. Cade, Cade joins us. He's and here. He's driving, though. He's got us. He got, he's got us with us tonight. And if you have like Cade and Scott and a few of our other members do IRDs, uh, <clears throat> remote demonstrations, that information goes into our chat. 
and it's wide open, folks. The chat is, if you have that information, we're going to share how to get the, these carving tools or uh, the bits or where you bought something. That can go in a chat. That's free. Well, you can just put it in chat. You got an event coming up, put it in chat. Um, you got a club event, put it in chat. Uh, if there's a way I can attend your club meetings by going through Zoom or the internet, put it in the chat so we can do this. That's what it's all about. That's wide open for everybody. So uh, good to see everybody's there tonight. Do we have any more gallery up popped in this evening? Late? No, no, not. Uh, well, let me double check. I got two fresh messages. Let me double check. Uh, no, nothing new. But I did want to review a gallery item that was displayed last week uh, when I was watching the program back yesterday. And Joaquin Vincent did a um, holoform vessel like beads of courage uh, thing with the, with the beads on the outside of it. And he did the brass finial from Cade's IRD. And I just wanted to say, Joaquin, you did a freaking excellent job on that. Thank you. That was a nice piece. That was a nice piece. It shows you how easy it's to be done, if I can do right. it for my first time. I mean, it was, but I did watch Cade, and that does make a difference. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was there for the IRD as well. But yeah, you, you, your piece was, you know, I, I'm glad you, you garnered that knowledge from, from what Cade was passing on because you, you did, you represented really well, sir. Thank you. Thank you very that much. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very nice, Joaquin. Well done. Thank you. Maybe next week I can have an aluminum one. <laughs> yeah. What you learn, what you learn early when you're doing those metal pieces is don't check the smoothness with your fingers when you're turning it. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Otherwise, so, it looks like you're in a wit set program with uh, no fingerprints. Uh, and I just, I heard about either. that. I, I never, um, I, I never experienced that. I read about that. Because, um, boy, I tell you what, it's, but um, it was, I watched the IRD I, um, that Kate did. Very good demonstration. Folks talk about, well, that's turning metal. How's that wood turning? Well, the same thing is spinning metal to to do shaping and spinning metal is the same thing where you learn how to shape it. One of our members one day would do a demonstration for us. I got pretty good at doing bells and some domes and stuff and then doing turn wood to match it or work with it. Um, I like to get back into it again. I still have a couple of dozen uh, aluminum discs in the back. Uh, what amazed me was I take a six inch disc and get a 12 inch bowl out of it. Um, that was paper freaking thin when I got done, but hey, it was, you know, to me, that was a main, that was a main thing. And, and it is an art and you, you have to really appreciate, you have to learn how the tool works. And if you miss or take one shortcut, forget about it, Bob, it's, it's, it's over. Um, but it is, it is fun. It makes some, some interesting stuff. You do Christmas ornaments. Uh, two Christmas ornaments make the bell to go along with it. Turn the handle, turn the fob or the, the clanger, and then turn the, the bell to go with it and decorate the bell. How do you decorate the bell? The decorating elf that you saw tonight, right here. Yes, that will emboss those bells the same way. Um, because if, if if you can cut, if most of the time, if you can cut metal uh, wood with the tool, you can cut lightweight, you can cut bronze and brass, aluminum, et cetera, and it all come out the same. Just be patient. And remember, speed can sometimes be your enemy, not your friend. Um, we have a few things popped up on the, the, the chat tonight, so save the chat before you leave because there's a couple of IRDs and some programs coming up. Um, the Beads of Courage is our next challenge. And in a, in a way that is, we want to see your Beads of Courage piece before you give it to Beads of Courage. SWAT is a big collection of Beads of Courage. Fantastic collection of them. I mean, if you attend SWAT, you'll see a whole room full. You won't believe 
the work you'll see there. And this is all being donated to children with cancer. You won't believe the work you'll see there, the quality, the art, the design, the talent, the beauty of what's in there. Well, we want to see your repeats of coverage work. Show us. Join us in, in a couple of weeks and show us what your beads of coverage look like. And you, can, if you, today I, I got to send it away. Show it to us anytime you're ready. We don't have a deadline or a set time or whatever. We want to see your work, and it, it's an important. It's an important that we do it. And what I've seen from it is, I've seen some real creativity come out of it. And, it, and, and it, it, you got to be aware of some of those guys from those Texas clubs. They kind of go, uh, 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 you know, one more step on. They 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 have inner club challenges that are really unique. And uh, it's, it, it be, makes their turning really great. So that's the beats of courage. Sun X competition. Folks, if you stick with us tonight, we're going to continue chatting for a while. I blank out about 9 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Um, but the gang stays here. We talk on. That's just how it is. Um, I've got to say good to see Mark Slave is back with us again this evening. Mark had been a little ill. Mark, good to see you back. Glad you're relaxing, taking it easy. Scott Hampton's back in a box, but he's not behind the late. Glad to see him back and a lot of the other regular members and everybody's welcome. Um, there is no priority, no, no, no click, no regime. And we're all the same. We're equal. We're on this level. So with that, right. I'm going to back out the way and, um, oh, wait, 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 wait. Do I have that? thought I had a picture. Wait, can you go to my other screen? I got, I got something I want to show you. Um, I have a couple of screens up here. I'm going to head it, head it to the output. I got you. I got you spotlighted on the other one. Can you get that? That I, I was by Tim Hatch's house, and uh, <laughs> yeah. he was he was he was going to be parking cars for Swan, and uh, I think it got hot where Tim lives at. <laughs> So um, yeah. if you go into SMART, don't go park by Tim's house. Right. Uh, 117 in Dallas. What's that? It was 117 today up in Denton, right near Dallas. 117. Right, that, but that was only for a couple minutes, so right? But it was a dry heat. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right out that car for sure. All right. Hey, Eddie, can I ask you a hey. question? You know, uh, you're talking about the guys going to SWAT and handing out stickers. Y'all talked one time about business cards. A, do we have a card or something you can pass out as well? Well, I know that Billy and them did it last year, didn't they? So, so Joaquin, there's a template on the web page that okay. is set up for a business card, and you can print them out yourself. Okay. I didn't know how that was done. And, and that's what Billy and, and the rest of the guys did uh, last year when, when they went. Okay. We had a couple of thousand made, uh, and that was early, early in the days of the club. Um, I don't have any funding for that right now. Um, we we kind of, we had, right. we're still working on the initial donation for the stickers and the donation for the, for the, uh, stick for the for the mailings but uh, we're trying to get the word out but if if you're attending an organization or a meeting and this is an open offer uh as long as i have the financing to pay for the shipping i'll send you a pack of cut of stickers if you're a member of a club or a group and you're going to get together um I was, we, we want to get our name out there we want to let okay, folks so, know who we are and where so, we are so we are going to start we are going to start doing that for open club meetings, provided there's funding for shipping. Yes, if I can, shouldn't, if I shouldn't be out for the shipping. No, if we if we can handle okay. it, we'll do it. But remember, okay. the, the pockets is empty. Um, oh, yes, but we I have know. some members. I'm, me and me and Birdhouse Bob are the finance members, and, and and yeah, we know the coffers are empty. Well, I'll just order two sets tomorrow to go to SWAT with, and you won't have to worry about funding them. 
Oh, I just shipped you two sets. Oh, sticker, you know. I just put them in the mail. Thanks, Joaquin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, did that, Joaquin. It's in the mail. Okay. Um, yeah, you see, we're a bunch of friends sitting on the tailgate telling lies. Yeah. That's what it's all about, folks. Y'all take care now. And in words of safety, Sue, be safe. Donald Masterson in Australia would normally tell you, save the chat. And uh, I'm, I just I just now pressed save the chat. Oh, and the printable cards you're looking for, it's in the chat. That's where Dave Rhodes, our master web master, has got them available for you folks. Um, and it's it just tells you how to get to worldwidewoodturners.org and all about us. So hope to see all you folks back here next week. Bring a friend. Please bring a friend. Invite one of your woodturning buddies. Uh, bring them along. Bring an idea or two. Bring a picture. Bring a piece of wood. Bring a tool. Bring a thought. I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and I'm out of here. Y'all take care now, and please, above all else, be safe. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Bring a, Hi. bring a friend. Tell a friend. Hi, Daddy. Good, Good night, night, everybody. Good night, Good folks. Night. Great meeting. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. All right. This is the demarcation point for the after hours. Yay! Which means we're going to stop rec we stop recording right now.